This is Screen Junkies Movie Fights. Last Fighter Standing. Hello everybody, welcome to an amazing episode of Movie Fights. This is going to be so good, I promise you, because the stakes have never been higher. Well, they were once, but they're back again. Because everyone today will be fighting for this. That's right. The showstopper, if you're unaware, was used two weeks ago, I believe, two fights ago. Alicia Malone came and surprised Dan Murrow. I'm cutting to Dan. Dan Murrow on the couch. She used the showstopper against you, and she didn't get it. She didn't get it, Dan. You still have the belt. I do. Uh, explain that. Was that nervous for you? Was that, that nerve-wracking for you, Dan? That was very nerve-wracking. I'm looking at you, and I see a light. So it's, that yeah. was very nerve-wracking, Andy. Uh, yeah, it's probably not good. Yeah, no, it's always going to be because it's, it's five questions, speed round. You lose three of that, you're done. Yep. No fighting your way out of the corner, nothing. Yep. So it's high stakes. Well, for those who don't know, the Showstopper is a special prize. If you win this, inside are five speed round questions. They are locked in. The winner of today's Last Fighter Standing will get this Showstopper. Inside, they will be able to challenge the champ, the current champ, but whatever happens, whenever the current champ, they will be able to challenge the current champ instantly on a movie fight to tackle and try and win the belt straight there. That's right. So five speed round questions that have been predetermined are in there. Dan does not know them. Nobody knows them uh, except for uh, Lon, myself, and Max, our producer. The three of us know these questions. Only we will know these questions, and anyone who wins here can have the chance to take that on. Dan, that's pretty epic stakes. That is pretty epic stakes. And like you said, the current champ. Who knows? Uh, three we months, four months, it might not be me. Dan might who put knows? the belt back on the line between you know, them, but exactly. we'll see. They could, uh, now, the only rule is they, they can't use it today. And they can't use. They only have to use it on a movie fights episode. It has to be during a real movie fights episode. No cons, uh, no other episodes, and not today. Uh, then they can use it any other time. So let's see who's up to take this challenge. We have so many amazing fighters. They're going to be fighting today. Uh, dumbest premise of a movie ever. Uh, if you could uh, recast a Travolta role with Nicolas Cage, what would you pick? What would the best movie family be? And my favorite ever. If you could swap out the main character with a talking dog, what movie would be improved? This is going to be a fun, wacky, weird one. We're pre-taping this one for the holidays, so if you're watching on Plus, happy Thanksgiving! If you're watching on YouTube, hope you're having a great weekend. Uh, let's meet the fighters for today's show. First up, I can't go first because he's in the booth. So I'll go, I'll, oh, here he goes. First up, he makes sure the show looks good and he started the show because he's switching, but Jonathan just stepped in. First up, it's our own GTE! Yeah, I guess I should have got to the Y. It was my bad. Uh, I'm going to bring these three up, and then I'll say who else is right. Second, she's an actress and critic who is all over Screen Junkies and Screen Junkies News. It's Sasha Pearl Raver! Yeah. 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 Oh. And third, fighting uh, critic, producer, no stranger movie fight, Scott Movie Man! Yeah. You're the first three up for this Woo! last fighter standing, but let's see who else will be fighting today. Cutting back to the wide, we also have fast talking movie lover, actor, host of Marvel Movie News, Koi Jandrew. Yeah, Koi yeah. Jandrew. You are uh, you are fourth. So let, let me explain how this worked. We did give you guys the chance for an advantage. We had a link that the, the voters at home voted. Uh, the highest votes on our special link. You, this wasn't a fav popularity contest. This was the, the fans. Can't, this wasn't who who had the most Twitter followers. This was our fans who go vote and a poll. You all had equal chance. And these, isn't this that is, the exact definition of a popularity contest? <laughs> well, no. I guess it is. I guess I just meant uh, last time I felt it was unfair because whoever had the most followers on Twitter got uh, sort of the advantage oh, there. So this time it didn't. You couldn't cheat on your on that. They had to come yeah. still to a different place to vote and see all we the options in one spot. Uh, so yes, you three, whatever. I won't say who lost, but you three were the <laughs> lowest voted. Okay, who lost? Fourth fourth just place, so up next will be Koi Jandrew, we just announced. <laughs> next fifth will be Mark Andreco. Mark Andreco! Sixth place will be our very own Joe Star. Joe Woo! Star! Yeah. Ooh, the seventh place was the one and only Spencer J. Gilbert. Spence! <laughs> And finally, yes. Claire fan favorite, number one seed, Mike Fat Carlson. Mike Fat Carlson! He can't be like that much. They didn't get his name right. <laughs> his, his, his Twitter was wrong. But Carlos. We'll adjust his Twitter. All right. Uh, and today, obviously, fact checking as always. The man they're hoping to dethrone for that belt, Mr. Dan Merle. Hi. Dan, are you excited for this show? I am excited. I'm not fighting this time. We heard nope. people said it. I'm, yep. I'll be a spectator. I am Switzerland. I'm neutral today. <laughs> I'm here to check facts and nothing else. Dan, who makes you most nervous? 
Uh, well, I mean, this is a murderer's row right here. I do have to say, though, that because it is a speed round only, Koi makes me very nervous because that guy can talk faster than anybody I know. So <laughs> The fans were very adamant that he'd be involved yeah. in this. If, if it's a speed round, round Koi is a very intimidating I've seen the game tape. I can beat him. Koi's in the machine. Oh. Awesome. Oh. Next to you on the fan awesome. Koi! Uh, awesome Koi! Tybee, Ty thank you for coming to watch. I may come to you to help, so you're here on a wacky episode. Please uh -oh. pay attention. Listen to these arguments. Great. Uh, I have you your support it. over there. Good. Sure do. Welcome. All right, guys, uh, let's get this started. Before we do, I just want one, one more announcement. I know, I'm sorry, I'm talking a lot, but this is important. This month, uh, ja uh, sorry, January of next year is going to be Fan Appreciation Month. Mm -hmm. We're finally bringing back fan fights! Fan Ooh, yes! fights! Woo! It's going to be bigger than ever, and you can learn all about it. We're also letting you guys pick uh, 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 all of January's honest trailers. I know we always let you pick, but we've selected 50 weird trailers. Isn't that right, Dan, Spencer, Joe? Yes. We've picked 50 trailers that we wouldn't normally probably handle right away and it's now in the hands of you you can go vote for which ones you want us to do in january uh you can do both that you can uh, apply for fan fights we're going to fly some of you out to here to los angeles to partake it's very exciting you learn all the rules and you can vote for the honest trailers by going to sj.plus slash fam f-a-m so go support check yeah. it out and get yeah. involved um and also big week next week we have special guests so i'll tell you at the end of the show mm -hmm. all right let's do this come on let's get nuts i want to fight you you want to fight let him fight Stop this fight, I'll kill you. I could do this all day. Rocky. Rocky. Round Captain America. one. Got Sloth, we got the Beatles, and we got Rocky. <laughs> Let's do it. Uh, all right, guys, ready? Round one. You guys have, so this is how the show's going to work. You guys have the biggest disadvantage here because yeah. this the thanks last for, fighter standing show. Hey, the vote it was votes. Scott, thanks don't yell at me. Thanks a lot. Thank it them, yeah. The way this show will work is the loser will be kicked out to join the couch. The two remaining winners will stay and tackle round two. Do we all understand? <laughs> so in this instance, I'm not necessarily going to pick winners. I'm going to pick the least persuasive argument. Gotcha. So it's a little away. bit different this time. I feel like yeah. he looked at me a so lot just, when he was doing this. You second <laughs> place, for up until yeah. the first several rounds, second place will do yep. you fine. As long as you're not worse. So it's the last fighter standing. You guys are, uh, Dan, actually last time, did start from the bottom, made it all the way to the end. So it is possible. Uh, but this is, everyone understand how this works? Yes. Yeah, yes. Right, got it. Don't okay, here, awesome. Uh, so here's question one, last fighter standing. Uh, what movie played on loop would you use to torture someone for information? Who's Pick starting? any movie. JT, you're going to start. All right. Do you want to just give you... I'm just going to give you the movie first, and we'll get into the debates. I'm going to go ahead with uh, Lon Von Trayer's Antichrist. If you're going to break somebody down, you have to do it spiritually, and I think this movie will do it. Oh, nice. That's it. JT, go dark. That's, just All right. starting off. All right. Breaking down spiritually. Sasha, okay. what's your pick? Uh, I chose 2007's Hairspray because who doesn't want to sit in a room and watch Zac Efron before he got his teeth fixed or John Travolta in a terrible fat suit defiling the memory of both Divine and Harvey Firestein listen to Queen Latifah sing for hours and hours on end. But here's the thing, that movie actually has a really sweet heart and a really sweet message. So you hate yourself and you want it to be over, but at the same time, you have feelings and the feels get to you and that's why I went with 2007's Hairspray. So, oh, so you're going to hate yourself so much, and then but love the fact that you hate it. Oh, that's really going to mess with your head. It's going to mess it. with your head. Uh, okay. All right. That's, movie man. Okay. Scott, I, what just, you got? I went with a movie that actually is about a torture scene. 2014's Tusk, mm. directed by your good pal, Kevin Smith. <laughs> Watching uh -oh. this movie was torture. Poor Justin <laughs> Long goes out we of his way. You, Kevin. He's Kevin's a podcaster great. who goes out of his way to, to, to interview an adventurer, and the guy takes him, he tortures him, he he slowly transforms him, and he drugs him so he can't escape, he can't fight back. It is the most, it is so uncomfortable. It is torture in itself, and it features a torture scene. All right, guys, what's the worst torture here? Right it's, here, it's, Tusk it's, is the listen, worst torture hold scene. Hold on, your movie's bad. Oh, and if you're watching live, I know we're not live, but still, hashtag movie fights live. You guys can yeah, all talk along, so hashtag movie does it. Uh, first of all, you're trying to torture and get information out of somebody. Yes! Okay, Tusk is actually, a lot of people really like that film. I agree, Giant Depp is the worst part of that film, but he comes no, in no, at no. the very end. And also, Justin Long is actually very charismatic, and I thought he was a good That's for why, him. that is exactly why, JT, that if, that, that if you're it, watching this nice guy 
get tortured is so disturbing. It is so uncomfortable to watch. I was sitting there watching this movie going, make it stop. This poor guy um, You want to talk about everybody. making it stop? Ever since this whole world began, a woman found it. If you shake it, she could shake up a man. And then you're going to shake and shimmy in with all that I can yes. today. Yes, so where's the torture? Yeah, I don't believe this guy. Where's the torture? Ever since this whole world began, where's a woman the torture? found it. If you find it, if you shake up a man. And then I'm going to shake and shimmy in with all that I can do today. Uh, okay, wait, wait, hang on. This is good. We get it? Can't stop, baby. Ever since this whole world began, I'm a Music. Wait a minute. You're talking about, you're talking about music. Catch music. This movie. Wait a minute. You can't stop. All right. She's, All right. she's made a point. I told her to stop. Yeah. She made her point. Okay, yeah. you make a point. Yeah. Hairspray is actually a good movie. There's nothing really bad about mm -hmm. it. And John Travolta's performance in the film, it, it was winking. It was poking fun at himself. John but Travolta, it is the worst of all the things that he's done. It's a feel good movie. a feel good movie. He's got a great soundtrack, too, by the way. It has yeah. is a really strong racial message, and right now I feel like if you can get in on that because it's such a hot button so issue, you, you can this? break people Why down. Why Why you somebody can, watch you that can movie. force people to really investigate here's, themselves. Here's, here's what you're That's trying not to do. Torture, though. You're trying yeah, to inspire. Is. Like they're gonna feel good enough. Or like you know what? This ain't Shawshank. They're not gonna be filled with hope. We're trying to tear somebody down in order. They're, listen, they're holding information that you want, and the reason they're holding that is because they believe in something. That's why somebody holds on information because they're standing for something. They're trying not to give in. Antichrist. You want to talk about disturbing film? Tusk was laughable. Nothing was really disturbing. Are you kidding it, me? Do you, no way. Antichrist has. <laughs> I, I hate that I have to say this. That's how disturbing it is. He literally. William Defoe gets hit in a crotch with like a dumbbell, and then she continues to jerk him off till he spurts blood out of his penis. Yeah, that happens in the movie. Sure, but well, if you want to talk about a real Mars Venture torture movie. I am movie, sorry, it's that bad. I'm talking about it. Right, Imagine but that's not that. the movie that would break you down. The Lars Venture movie that would break you down would be Nymphomaniac. Nymphomaniac no. is unrelenting, non stop. Not, Antichrist actually I has. Agree. If you wanted to torture someone, you would put on Nymphomaniac. I that's Nymphomaniac the thing. would be brutal. Nymphomaniac is through. at least interesting because of different stories. When you're not seeing this sick, crappy shit, you actually get to see William Defoe give like a therapy session, which is boring as hell. So when you're not bored to hell, you're scared as hell because there's literally some of the most grotesque things you've ever seen. I want to break this guy down to his core to the point where he doesn't believe in religion anymore. And Antichrist will take him psychologically. It's going to mess him up, man. Antichrist is one of the hardest films I've ever had to watch. Watching it on the loop will actually break him down. Okay, hold on. So I'm, I'm getting you have you have uh, grotesque and things boring. and boring. You have just killing uh, good music. repetition. Good music. And Music is the heart of the soul. I hate, I hate, hate watch. And then you have torture, legitimate torture. torture. Well, legitimate torture. Wait a second. Right. As, as you're had, going through, why, are, why yeah, is you, your thing worse than the other? You had time yeah. to talk, and you had time to sing, and you've, you were beautiful. You've had a lot of time to talk about though. But okay, okay, okay. I had a lot of time to talk, and I'm going to use it right now because <laughs> he plays this right, nice guy. He represents everybody, and he is slowly tortured, painfully, and turned into a walrus. His body parts are slowly, be, slowly, like it is torture. He is being tortured slowly. It is beyond disturbing. You feel like you are the one being tortured, and you are because the movie keeps going, it doesn't stop. He did not deserve to be tortured. We feel his pain, and so do you watching this movie. That, I wanted this movie to end, I wanted to walk out, it was, distur it was disturbing, it was uncomfortable, and I think showing this movie to someone, showing this movie to this poor guy getting slowly turned into a walrus where he can't even pull a Harry Carey and kill himself because he doesn't have hands anymore, he has flippers. It is torture, you go, it, it, no. it's unwatchable. It's comical, it's, it's a comical movie. torture. It's not, it's not At funny. the end of the movie, you see him as a walrus right. human being, and I laughed out loud out in the theater because it was so laugh. ridiculous. I thought it was disturbing. What? That it was really disturbing. disturbed me. It was one of the most right, disturbing movies I've ever seen. I'm sorry. Laws of Andres Trier, you want to talk about disturbing, again, uh, the penis thing is worse. There's even more <laughs> scenes of people cutting their genitalia off. I don't need to see that every day, especially on a loop. Also, Laws of Trier, it really comes down to some of the most horrible things I've seen on screen. A baby falls off a windowsill to its death. I don't, this guy, what this movie does is it makes you not care for humanity. It doesn't make you care about anything to the point where you're like, you know what? Humanity's not even worth saving. Whatever information Sasha, I'm holding on to, okay, whatever you, information I'm holding on to, I don't care. He's talking about a single moment. You're talking about single the penis moment. thing. You're talking about the baby. You're talking about the very end of the movie. I'm talking about listening to non-stop music for, let's say, 72 hours Why straight. Why is that worse yeah. than grotesque torture? Are you kidding me? It would drive you crazy. It's one of the longest it's running musicals ever. It gets ever. into your head. And at a certain point, you just want to make it stop. Every single musical number goes right into the last one. Like, the last song is You Can't Stop the Beat. The last word um, in it I is Good Morning. 
Morning Baltimore, and Good Morning Baltimore is the first song right, in the film. So you're back, back to the beginning into of the it, movie. and it makes you feel like you're losing your mind. And even though maybe you can say it's enjoyable, you're trying to tell me you want to do a 47-hour nonstop watch of that, you would want to slit your wrists. And that sort of faux happiness is enough to drive anyone crazy. Because just a minute. all they would want to do just is have some reality. Y- your all right, ticket, final thoughts going wall, back through. Sorry, Scott. Scott. It's, it's, him being turned into walrus is not the very end of the movie. That happens at the end of the movie, but throughout the course of the movie, we see him slowly being transformed. It is the course of this movie. You know where it's going. You're dreading it. It happens. Watching it happen is uncomfortable. I wouldn't wish this movie on my worst enemy, but okay, I, I would show I, this I, movie I, to my, my worst enemy if I wanted information because he would I say, I give you one more shot. Stop. I, I've heard the, you all three main valid reasons why yours is torture. Why is the uh, why are the other two not? Final okay, arguments. First of all, first of all, Hairspray is a good movie. It's a feel good film. The music is good. I mean, I wouldn't really. There's nothing about that film that I find torturous. I mean, Antichrist, not a great film, but you're talking about a moment, and I actually agree with your argument that Nymphomaniac is worse, and that's the movie. The well, Nymphomaniac movie, is, here, is it worse use. than these two? What's what? what n- okay, use your turn, but let's not. It doesn't matter that Nymphomaniac is worse. We're only talking about these three movies. In terms of Antichrist, I think that you could actually get really into the art of it. I think that you can look at some of the shots and say, oh, this is beautiful. There are things that you can take out of that movie besides like a, the penis thing for ah, whatever. That's not that big of a deal. <laughs> not for me. I, feel like it's, <laughs> I just feel like that's something that you can actually enjoy the filmmaking process even if you don't enjoy the film. In terms of Tusk, Tusk actually has some really redeemable parts. Like, like you might what? not like the Johnny Depp thing, but Johnny Depp was my favorite part of it. There is some really interesting acting. I love watching Haley Joel Osment in that movie, but to watch a film that not only seeps into your brain, but it becomes this constant running loop where all you would want is to make that fucking music stop, Mm-mm. I swear to God, that would break a person down more quickly than a movie where you could be like, oh, that's interesting. I didn't see that scene before. Oh, that's a beautiful shot. All you got is John Travolta running around in a fat suit no, looking John ridiculous Travolta and acting supporting, badly. He's a supporting actor in the film. He's not you even the lead actor. You can't stop ever since it's all... You're going off a music which has like one of the longest running Broadway hits, and the music alone is just joyful. And when, there's people out there that put this inner city player on their iPod and listen to it all day anyway. What you're saying is half the people that love musicals should be tortured, are being tortured, which I don't think is a fact. I think your movie, a lot of people really enjoy it, and I think Kevin Smith humor sne- sneaks into the movie. A, a lot Justin, of people who- Justin Long is really good, and there's some great, actually funny moments with his friend. There's an interesting story there. My movie, like you said, is beautiful, which makes it even worse because it draws you into the horror. It draws you into the disturbingness. You can't just look it away because you're actually interested in what you're seeing on screen and as you're watching it and your soul just feels like it's being decayed. My movie is the most grounded of the three films. Because <laughs> the walrus is on the floor? Right, I don't know Scott understand. keeps getting a lot. You get one last <laughs> line, Sasha. I'm going to be fair here. Would you like one last line? Sing something. Yeah, sing something. <laughs> sing. You got a beautiful singing voice, Sasha. No? Okay. No. I, I made my argument. <laughs> last argument, one line. Last argument. Scott uh, went in about the people, people walked out of the theater when they saw it because they couldn't even watch it the first time. Dan. All right, just a few things to clean up. JT, I think, was just saying the names of people he was looking at in the room. It's Lars Von Cheer, not Lon Von Cheer. But hi, Lon. <laughs> Where's Lon? There he is. There's Lon. <laughs> Sorry, Lon. Uh, Sasha, you mentioned uh, John Travolta <laughs> defiling the memories of Divine and Harvey Firestein. Uh, Divine did pass away. Harvey Firestein, happily, though, still with us. So, <laughs> I, I meant the memory uh, of, their performance. of their performances. Yes. Absolutely. Uh, before the Cub fans get upset, Harry Carey, uh, Scott was not referring to the broadcaster. He was referring to <laughs> Sepuku or Ritual. <laughs> Uh, Samurai okay. Suicide. Well, he wasn't talking about Harry Kane. Uh, Harry he wasn't talking about Harry Kane. Listen, I'm just saying, <laughs> I, see, I see the comments every week. like, what what you say about? Harry Carey? It's, it's different. And also, uh, Hairspray is the 21st longest running Thank Broadway you. show. So, Point not 20. up there in the top 10, but uh, it's up there. certainly up there. Oh, shit. <clears throat> uh, it's a tough one. Hashtag. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag. Come on, guys. Give it up. Give it up! They don't want to give it uh, up. Fine. <laughs> Koi gave what time on the couch. Off. I'm curious, as our as our stranger here, what, which one sounds like the most tortured to you? I have not seen Antichrist or Tusk. Probably because people told you not to. Right. Based on the arguments, which is though. my thing. But I also despise Amanda Bynes. Well, that's personal. So yeah, that's I have personal. like a personal <laughs> thing, but I do enjoy the music from Hairspray. So I'm gonna say I think that Tusk would probably be the most torturous for me to watch. Because that whole turning into a walrus thing, even thinking about it sort of makes me want to die. All right, fair enough, fair points. I think, Sasha, you made a good point about the music, but I just think the fact that it's so successful that they pointed to you 
You would have had me, but you picked a, a musical that. I'm gonna play it on a loop for you. I'm gonna play it on a loop for you, and you're gonna be like, "Oh man, you're right." Before you sing it, sing it. So I just need a little bit more, and I think if you fair music argument, but I think they got you as to why that one wasn't, and both of theirs has a lot of other awful things in it too. Fine. Coupled with disturbing injury, so I hate to do it, but Sasha, I'm out. You're the first one out. But guess what? What? You and everyone else who doesn't make it to the finals will help determine who wins because you guys get to vote for who gets the show. I'm just really sad I don't get to fight my next answer because my next answer was the best. But JTE, that's okay, because you'll be sitting yeah. down soon. I'll be sitting down. I will be. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Round of applause for Sasha. <laughs> Wait, if you're Sasha, you have a beautiful Sasha, singing very voice, close. sister. Yeah. Very close. I'm going to play it for you. All right. I, I, now I'm, I'm not looking forward to that. You are, that's fair. <laughs> Up next, taking that seat, is Koi Jandro. I right. Yeah, Lattie. just like the last time. Really excited. Just Lattie. like the last time. Like Dan, I'm curious. Lattie. What would you have done that Lattie. round? As the as, as the person watching, as the person who has to take take this. Based on the Since arguments, I can't get a voters poll. Let's get Dan's poll after my verdict. I think based on the arguments, I probably would have eliminated Scott. Uh, just based on the the counter arguments that there were. That's a, it seemed more of a personal taste thing. They both brought up there were good points and Sasha's. Uh, effective demonstration of the music in Hairspray <laughs> for me <laughs> would have would have sold how I over and over that could have tortured. I was with you until they sort of both re, 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 reminded me how popular the songs are and mm -hmm. JT's yeah. point of well, people listen to it all day anyway. I yeah. uh, anyway, but yes, all right, fair enough. All right, good. I'm glad I took her out then because it sounds. I think you're just trying to get her in so you can. I don't know. He's got sneaky motivations there because he wants to <laughs> win. Uh, round two. Here we go. Koi, you've stepped in. This is a fun one. Number two. What major Hollywood release has the all-time dumbest premise? Any movie, all-time dumbest premise. Koi, you're up. F uh, yeah, Koi, you're up first. Start with me. All right. Yes. So this is a beloved film, and the phrasing of major Hollywood release definitely uh, stung a bit because this was nominated for four Oscars. I think this film is an insult to action fans, drama fans, any type of fan in this genre, and I think that Armageddon hurts the viewer. It is a film wherein they... <laughs> A Texas-sized asteroid is coming at the planet that we somehow haven't noticed. Texas is real big, you guys. And that instead of sending up astronauts to drill into this asteroid to plant a nuke, which is already a very tried trope, they send up oil drillers who they've recently trained as astronauts. The idea that it's easier to train someone to be an astronaut than someone to be an oil driller is insane. They gather people that literally might have just been mechanics that were applying to do a job that many people on Earth do. There are so few people that have been astronauts and there are so many people that do the noble profession of oil drilling. The fact that you have to be... I said it. It's a, it's a thing we need. Now, astronauts, we can count the number of people that are astronauts easily. We cannot count the number of people that are oil drillers. This is a profession that takes years of training, not six weeks. How do we not see the asteroid? How did these people just become astronauts? They're not even in shape. Everyone in that movie is a fairly out of shape American actor. How do they even survive the way up there? So anyway, they have to drill into this thing, plant a nuke. The For some reason, the asteroid's been made of metal. For We don't know that why. There's no gravity on the asteroid. Everything about it from start to finish is insane, down to the fact that they individually train these people to do tasks, and at one point they plant a bomb. The bomb has, the bomb has an external detonator on it that someone doesn't know how to stop. He put it there! How do you not know how to stop the own thing you placed? It is absurd start to finish, not to mention the weirdness of Steven Tyler singing over his daughter making out Ben Affleck. That's beside the point. That uh, sounds like a fun movie. Movie, right. movie Nance. Okay, my uh, premise, also a popular film, a studio movie came out, was released by Paramount in, in 1997, directed by John Woo. The movie is Face Oh my god, off. what is wrong I with you? I want to take his face his I love off. Wow, so you love this movie, don't you? I love Face you Off. You know what? It's an entertaining film, but if you strip it back, the premise is ridiculously fucking stupid. <laughs> so you're going to take off John Travolta's face, and you're going to take off Nicolas Cage's face, you you know, put the other faces on, but you're not going to change the hair or the voice pattern or the body. So, so Travolta had the evil Travolta has sex with his wife, and she doesn't look at his body and go, wait a minute, your dick is a lot smaller than it used to be? It hey, makes no sense you don't whatsoever. Know penis size. It's, you know, it's a fun movie to watch. 
And, you know, I'm not talking about the film itself because it does have the stylish John Woo mm -hmm. signatures with the doves and the flying uh, through the air, shooting the, the guns in slow motion. But the acting is, like, incredibly cheesy. Face Off will work better as a comedy because the, at the premise is so completely fucked up and stupid. Whoa. <laughs> Manson taking it, taking, uh, it, taking it mature. Go ahead. I JC. can't wait to rebut both your guys, but I'm gonna go ahead. As you can see, I'm wearing a Rocky shirt. I'm a big fan of Stallone. This guy was killing in the '80s, Rocky and Rambo, but even he couldn't overcome one of the worst premises for a comedy I've ever heard in my life. I'm talking about Rhinestone. Now, with your guys' movies, you actually have to go into a studio office and try to sell it. You tell me you're a producer and you're like, I got a big asteroid disaster film. I got heroes going up there. I got nuclear explosions. I got Steven Tyler singing a song. You, I got just two of the biggest actors at the time who were doing almost, and originally Face Off was a sci-fi film, and they just made it into modern times. My guy had to go into an office and say, this is what I'm thinking for my movie. Let's hear it. Let's have Dolly Parton star in a movie where she makes a bet with another manager that I can make a cabbie driver, played by Stallone, a great country singer. How the hell does that, how does this guy leave the room with a go picture on that? Not to mention, in the movie, the wager is if she can't get Stallone to sing like a real cowboy, she has to sleep with the other manager. That's just wrong on every ethic level I can think of. It's, it's, it's such a horrible film. It's a disgusting premise. It's, it offends people. It offends me to this day. And Stallone is one of the worst singers I've ever heard in my life. This guy was born not to be a country singer. And yet they try to make him. And not only do they do it as a joke, by the end you're supposed to think he's actually a good country singer. And it's horrible. How does that premise get sold? To, I have no idea. All right, guys, what's the dumbest premise? Now, okay. I, can I say something first? Please. I get it. All three of yours are dumb. Tell me why the other can ones I are dumb. Can I tell you why there's are dumb? I, I feel like in <laughs> real life, that happens. There are people singing today that shouldn't sing. There is auto-tuning. There are people trained to sing in a week because that's what has to be done. There are people that should not be on the radio that are on the radio. Are you saying they saw this as a true story? With Face Off, that is the premise that you can change someone's hair. We recently had someone get a full heart and transplant. Their face, we recently and had their someone voice, a full, and their penis a full size. heart <laughs> transplant was just done. Someone <laughs> lives right now with someone else's heart. I believe it's more likely to have someone live with someone else's heart than Bruce Willis can ever be an astronaut. I believe that you cannot get Steve Buscemi in space. I believe that 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 is more plausible, and they also had lots of time and they were prepared for it. That is something they knew they were coming. Six weeks to stop a sudden all asteroid. Right, okay, I, I agree with you. First of all, plausibility. We're, we're talking about the premise here. Let's remember yes. this. We are Thank talking you. about the premise. We are not talking about the end product. You were sold. Rhinestone was sold because at the time Stone Stallone was a big actor. Was a big actor. Of course. But even Face Off was sold on the actors, not the mm -hmm. premise. Of course. And listen, Armageddon. You know, you have an asteroid coming to the Earth. Another movie, similar, similar film came out around the same time. Deep Impact. How do we stop this? thing they didn't but you know what it makes sense to send people up there to drill a hole plant a nuke and it makes sense for them to do oil drillers i mean the execution was bad michael bay's direction was ridiculous the song was bad but what? the premise oh, the premise, right itself, <laughs> wait, the premise hang food. on the premise is what made sense. The premise for Armageddon worked. The premise for Ro for Rhinestone, take a cabbie, make him into a country singer, what's wrong with and that? And she has to sleep with the other manager if she but doesn't do it. it's the premise. We're talking That's about the, the premise. premise. That's the, the premise of the movie. premise is like, it makes no sense. You're going to replace the face, but what about the hair? What about the voice? And what the about penis. the size? Here's the size. Margot Robbie is Pac-Man. You got to remember. Margot Robbie is Pac-Man. Your turn, your turn. You got to remember, uh, uh, Pac -Man. remember the movies you guys are trying to make. You are making a huge budget summer blockbuster. When you pitch that premise, yeah, Hollywood's been making these big, dumb action disaster movies for as long as you can. Go back to Towering Inferno. Exactly. You go back to Poseidon. Those movies are ridiculous, but they're great fun. So when I hear your premise, like, an asteroid coming to Earth, huge effects, huge action, A-list stars, we're not talking about the plaza, we're, we're not talking about the accountability of how big it's going to do. We're talking about the actual yes, saying it on the, paper. The, 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 the instead of astronauts up. How doesn't make any sense. They say in the movie, you can't just shoot nukes at it. You have to put a nuke. You teach an astronaut how to point a drill at the ground and go down. You teach someone to go like this, and then you've won. Teaching he someone to in the movie is a much harder thing than a, teaching someone to go down. If you put a firecracker in your hand and it explodes, you get stung. If you hold, close that fist, your hand gets blown so off. So you teach someone to <laughs> That's close why. that fist. You teach a scientist who's There's got no a time PhD. There's no time this asteroid coming to Someone put, that can be an astronaut can drill. Someone that can no, be an astronaut, a they driller the cannot movie. go to space. Can we make a new show, JT Explains Movie Science? Thank you. I really Thank want you. to watch it. <laughs> That's from the movie. And everything you said negatively, you said that this was bad, this was bad, this was bad. All that had nothing to do with the premise. The actual actual premise inherently is that you're sending people that cannot go to space to space. Michael Clark Duncan would not survive that level of G's. That man's heart would not make all it right, through. Alright, again. Oh, oh, too soon. oh, yeah, that was brutal. I'm sorry. It's uh, real. Oh, dude. It's real. I can't help it. I'm sorry. Dude. 
All too right. Soon. All premises. These the three premises Ridiculous. are stupid. Last final thoughts. Mm -hmm. Why is cab driver being country star weirder than oil drinkers going in space versus taking faces mm -hmm. off? Last thoughts, JT. Uh, do you want me to explain my first or rebut I get first? why yours are okay. bad. Why, tell me again why theirs is dumber than theirs. The reason why is yours is dumb is because I think yours is mainly about two great actors actually having to go against each other. The premise off, is yep. dumb, but there is surgical science. Thank you. The premise is dumb. You said listen, it. Listen, it is, but there's surgical science to back it up. There's no, there's nothing to back up Stallone could ever be a good country singer. He's a horrible <laughs> singer. In your movie, it's it's just stupid science. Yes, you could go up there. What else are they going to do? And they have six months. They don't have time to train those uh, six astronauts. Weeks. Six weeks. Well, even better. Six weeks. They don't have time to train them. But they have time to and train the movie, oil And the movie does touch. They do touch on how even they say as they do the physicals, half these guys might not even survive the trip up there. The fact they do is just because it's a fun popcorn summer movie. My movie is about a lady who made a bet where she had to sleep with somebody. She couldn't make Stallone a cabbie driver. I mean, your guys sound like good genre movies in those genres. Like, if I was a producer, and I was like, I want to make an action it's movie. It's not about the genre though. It's about the premise. It's but the, the premise, premise has to fit the genre. What person thought this would be funny? Stallone trying to be a country singer with Dolly. Part in. Okay. Right, wait, okay. Coy, and then Coy. Scott. I have seen people that can't sing get record deals. I believe that you could find someone on the street. There's no I believe that Vegas. you can grab someone off the street and make them capable of singing. I totally believe that. I, I believe, believe that you get too. Dolly Parton Not to train someone to sing, she'll get a record deal. I think that happens all the time. I believe that's believable. I don't think mine is. I believe that when you can do a heart transplant, when you can do a full arm transplant and make it work, why not work for the face? And I agree with what you're saying, that you need John Travolta and Nicolas Cage. Your movie doesn't work without the plausible deniability of that being able to exist. That is inherent to the thing working. This doesn't have that. People can sing, people can change faces, sure. All right, first of all, we're talking about the premise. Yes. The, the, the question is, what major Hollywood re release has the all-time dumbest premise? The premise mm -hmm. of a woman turning a cabbie into a singer sounds like a good premise. The premise of sending oil it's breakers up to, to blow up an asteroid sounds like a great mm -hmm. premise. The premise of, of switching faces I mean, I mean, a face is visual. A heart is not. You can get away with transplanting a heart. No one would notice. You can, you can get away, and I, you can get away with, but, but uh, you can get away with transplanting a penis. Very important. Very important. Unless, yeah, unless, coming, unless you coming take coming. it off, you take the clothes coming. off. If you take the clothes off, the wife's gotta go. Honey, what the hell happened to your dick? They never said they didn't it change faces. No they never All said. Right. Stupid right. premise. Face off. Man, really tense, 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 tense. <laughs> Guys, what do you think back there? You like uh, Scott's obsession with penises? <laughs> All right, Dan. All right. Uh, <laughs> Come on, Dan. So much to jump into here. Uh, Koi asked how they missed uh, the asteroid in Armageddon. To quote the, the movie, it's a big ass sky. That was their explanation. Really? <laughs> They're looking all the time. That's we not, notice uh, pebbles. That's not part of the premise. Uh, that's part of the premise. <laughs> not the seeing? most the most recent count of how many astronauts there are in the United States right now is forty six, which mm. is a lot of astronauts. Scott and Face Off. They did explain how the voices changed. They had vocal yep. implants <laughs> yes, that they put yes, in. Yes, they did. Uh, the vowel morphinization of the bodies was shown. Mm -hmm. I can't explain the penis. Thing I, I think there's a lot of emphasis put on that, but that's a whole other thing. They might just have the same penis size. Uh, JT, I hate to crush your dreams, but Rhinestone was originally written by Phil Alden Robinson, who wrote Field of Dreams, rewritten heavily by Sylvester Stallone. Right, listen. Oh! 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 I get it. Everyone has a misstep, man. Uh, the actual time to impact in Armageddon was 18 days. That was it. Wasn't six weeks. Oh, it was 18 okay. days. Even uh, less, less to train oil riggers to go to space. No, ben Affleck makes, makes once, more sense. There's a story confirmed by Ben Affleck that he once asked Michael Bay, "Coy, your question: Why didn't you just train astronauts how to drill instead of training drillers how to be time. astronauts?" His answer was, and I quote: "Sorry, mom, shut the fuck up." That's what Michael <laughs> Bay told Ben Affleck. Even the people in the question. movie know it's the worst premise. Ben Affleck did Geely and didn't question it. He questioned so, Armageddon. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's all I got. Well, how many, how many oil riggers are there? I think, the uh, I think Koi won this one, so Damn Koi, it. you're safe. Damn it. I, I'm not, but it, so it came down to I Scott to you, and JT, so I'm going to make this a little bit more dramatic. Mm -hmm. But I think Koi really schooled you both in that one, because I was pretty passionate. Really? Hmm. Uh, I think both of, your, both of your premises could be doable, but Face Off's definitely weirder, so i got to cut JT and Rhinestone. It, uh, I mean, it's... It, nice Koi, try. Koi, Koi, they, I was trying to do it all the time with auto-tune yes. and everything else. Nice yes. Auto-tune was in the 80s, and theirs fits the genre. <laughs> <laughs> he made his decision. <laughs> I'm just saying... He made his decision. Those, <laughs> those hit the, the genre correctly. It doesn't mean genre. the premise is, is not I'm glad dumb. I lost on a story. The question is not bad. The question is dumb. Tance. That's honor. Tance. We're going out. Round of applause for JT. rounds. And I'm not this obsessed with penises. Wow, man. Yeah. You made it for two. You're still Nathan's here. Nathan's still here. Woo. All right. Dan, coming back to you, what would you have done that round? 
Oh boy, that was uh, that was a really difficult round. I I, I don't know. I, I think uh, I would agree that Mance really sold the dumb amount of his premise. Uh, JT, I think, on the surface had the dumbest one, but I, I think I might have agreed with you there. All right, here we go. Number up for three, Mark Andrinko! Mark Andrinko! All right, Mark, welcome to the table. Oh, How's it feel? You had to go first last time. You got a little bit more edge this time. The yeah. fans took you a little further. You feel good? Sure. Yeah, good. Yeah. Uh, all right, here we go. Uh, recast. Oh, this is a fun one. This is actually a really fun one. I, w- I would have been interested to see what uh, JT had said this. And Sasha. All right, guys. This is, we, we tease this in SGU. This is, I'm excited. To, hopefully this is fun. But uh, I was excited in the room when we came up with this. And here we go. Recast a John Travolta role with Nicolas Cage. <laughs> the only fitting you're here, Mance, because... Last time we did this, we was switched Stallone with Schwarzenegger. Or Schwarzenegger with Stallone, you picked Rocky. Rocky! It was Schwarzenegger's our, Rocky! Come one on! One of our favorite moments of uh, movie fight history. Uh, so let's see, we're switching it around this time. We're recasting Travolta with Nicolas Cage, and we're starting with you this time. Okay, full man. disclosure, I had an answer. I was ready to go with it. I was going to crush it. And at the very last second, I had to switch my answer we because both you guys it. had the same answer. So selflessly, voluntarily, I was the first. <laughs> I oh, was the first. Those, those I was the first to to sacrifice it's my a coin answer. Toss. Go for another film at the very very last minute. So at the very very last minute, I'm continuing the theme here. Stop I'm going qualifying. To, Get I'm off the going, cross. We need the wood. I'm <laughs> going to replace John Travolta with Nicolas Cage in Face Off. <laughs> <laughs> so you have Nicolas Cage versus Nicolas Cage. Now, no, now, my head's going to explode. Now, well, now, that wait, does solve on. the penis question for me. <laughs> the last it does. It does. <laughs> that would solve the penis question. <laughs> Identical twins don't wait, always have the I same down there. I can just imagine the comments on YouTube after this one. <laughs> What's All right. So you're with switching uh, Travolta okay. Cage's performances. Now, now Travolta, you're switching. Travolta makes a cameo because you have to switch the face. As the penis? No, no. Not switching. No. You have, Travolta makes a cameo because then it's a certain point. His character gets Nicolas Cage's face. So then for the rest of the movie, it's Nicolas Cage versus Nicolas Cage. But oh, sex- wait. So I'm sorry. You're not switching. Now you're really screwing me up. I thought you were just changing their roles. No, no, no. No, so now Cage is playing both roles. Cage is playing both roles. <laughs> okay. All right. It is far out, but think about so it. Ca- so Nicola- it's like an adaptation. It's, 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 it's sort of like, a, it's sort of it's like an adaptation, but, but it's all, it's more like that Jean-Claude Van Damme movie. What was that movie? Uh, all played, of them? Double Impact? Double Impact, yes. Got it. So right. they're twins. So they're so twins. Twins? Well, they're twins. No, no, no. Look, Dan, you have to oh, look at this fact. Did I mention always that have the same I, penis size? last second. They do not. At the last second, I had to switch my, my choice, so so I'm, I'm winging it here. All right, but, but imagine, two cages. Okay, you get rid of Travolta, who is turbo in this movie anyway, and you have Nicolas Cage playing both of them to extremes. He plays both, uh, wait, wait, he plays both... Uh, Castro uh, Troy, uh, Ca- Castro Troy and Sean Archer. Castro Troy and Sean Archer, but he plays them so differently that you actually can tell them apart. It actually makes it more of a challenge for John Woo to make a film where you can tell them apart, and the action scenes would be so much better if you saw Nicolas Cage fighting Nicolas Cage. Wow. Boom. All right. I, I, just, I do like it. Mark, you're next. Um, my choice is, this is for Sasha, uh, Hairspray. Uh, Woo! Because John Travolta not only is god awful in that movie, he looks like John Travolta who died and was in the river for a week and all that that, that fat makeup. It's just it's disturbing as hell. And and if we get if we get Vampires Kiss Wicker Man Nicolas Cage, yeah. it's gonna be the weirdest fucking movie you've ever seen. Can you imagine Nicolas Cage in a fat suit, full on bees, kissing Christopher Walken while dancing and singing? I, I have to see that before I die. That's the weirdest thing ever. All right. Fellini couldn't make that movie. These are two weird choices. Coy, what are you picking? I have a movie that John Travolta clearly did because of his allegiance to the religion, and I imagine if Nick Cage was in it, he would have to be have an allegiance to that religion as well. Battlefield Earth, starring Nicolas Cage, would be <laughs> Nicolas Cage with flowing dreads, pure madness in his eyes, and explosions in his heart. It would be a movie where in Nicolas Cage, who's already insane, who's already the Wicker Man, who's already the most insane guy we know, is also a Scientologist. So we've got a man who's so invested in madness that he fully commits to playing an L. Ron Hubbard creature by way of Nicolas Cage's already zaniness. This is a level of Nick Cage we've never experienced. This is more than ABCDE. 
AFG crazy. This is more than face off. This is a man who's already Nick Cage, comma, Scientologist. We don't even know what that would look like. He would vibrate out of the fucking freaking celluloid. It would be art. I want it. Okay. All right, we got Cage and Face Off playing both roles, and we have Battlefield Earth Cage and Hairspray Cage. All right, okay, let's hear guys, why, here's why. the thing. First of all, the sound of my movie. Cage. I've seen that Wait movie. Minute, adaptation. Hang on. Sorry. Hang on. It, it, well, adaptation is not an action film. Different movie. It's Spike Jones. It's Charlie it's a different movie. It's different. Different movie. Okay, you just you just said it just now. Cage playing both roles. Like that sounds interesting. That sounds ambitious. That sounds like a movie I'd want to see. Hairspray. John Travolta is a supporting role, and he was actually pretty decent in the film. I don't think it's going to make any difference at all if you cast Nicolas Cage. Yeah. It's still going to be a supporting role. The role isn't going to change that much, and he's buried in makeup just like he is in Battlefield Earth. Battlefield Earth is an atrocious movie. You could have put Tom Cruise, another Scientologist. You could have put George Clooney. You could have put Meryl Streep in that freaking role with the dreadlocks, it would not have changed the film. It would not have made it a better movie. It still would have sucked balls. Here I go again with the penis jokes here. Uh, it wouldn't have made a difference. Whereas Nicolas Cage versus Nicolas Cage takes an already well-reviewed and well-liked movie. I'm not uh, getting rid of my argument from the previous question, but it makes it a movie that I'd actually want to see. That sounds cool. Cage versus Cage in. The thing that makes... Sorry. He, oh, sorry. Is it him or me? It doesn't matter at this point. The there. thing that makes Face Off work <laughs> is that you have John Travolta playing Nicolas Cage and Nicolas Cage playing John Travolta. The thing that makes Face Off work is the excitement of seeing two actors at their prime parrying each other. If you have Nick Cage parrying Nick Cage, that's just the Wicker Man. If you have Nick Cage playing John Travolta, you have an actual experience. There are dozens of twin films with action stars. There are a dozen of action films where that's the premise. We've already had that. Face Off they? was unique. I mean, Twin Dragons, like you just referenced, there, there are movies where that action... Not a dozen. Th th there are movies. Now, this is a film that is unique in that there's actors playing off each other. Now, with Hairspray, that was fun because we saw an actor who had become a parody of musical playing a thing. I think John Travolta is unique in that film for a reason, and Nick Cage could have done a parody of John Travolta. legally, we can't say what that reason well, is. Exactly, we cannot. But Nick Cage playing that role would be, would be you know, lesser. Whereas, whereas my film... It, it, he would have to be so insane that it would change the actual fabric of the film. I disagree with what you're saying about Ed, Meryl Streep could have played it. Nick Cage was just getting full bore by the time Battlefield Earth came out. This would have just ascended him to another level of crazy and we would have seen, I mean, Nick Cage with dreads doing a sci-fi action is just something special. But he, but it's not going to be Mark, Ed, well, well, first of all, Nicolas Cage play, playing two roles, playing two versions of Nicolas Cage. Nicolas Cage is not known for his versatility. Yes, he is. So it's a little bit redundant. Yeah, screaming and screaming crazy. Uh, wow, there's a he big difference. He won an Oscar for for, for so did Las Halle Vegas. Berry. Winning an Oscar does not necessarily mean anything. But it's not a bad thing. So You're did saying it like it's a bad no. thing. What? It's nothing. Winning, yeah, an, winning Oscar? an Oscar is not a bad thing. You're saying it like it's a bad thing. No, but I'm not saying the winning. An, I'm saying the winning an Oscar doesn't necessarily mean you're talented. It's lot, there's lots of Oscars that have been won for people that didn't deserve them. Have you ever seen The Greatest Show on Earth? That won yes, Best I Picture? did. That was what the yeah. 50s. It doesn't on matter. Oh, matter. <laughs> and and the thing about Battlefield Earth is it's such a god awful movie that I don't think. Even the possibility of Nicolas Cage bringing something to the table there, the movie itself is so awful. If you give someone a bucket of shit, they can't make dinner out of it. It's just awful. And if you want to talk about Nicolas Cage in a movie with long hair, madness, and explosions, that was Con Air. It was just without Forrest absolutely. Whitaker and mine changes the fabric of the film the most. Putting not Nick Cage really, in, no, absolutely, because this is a movie. Nick Cage does well in B movies. Mm -hmm. People go seek out crazy Nick Cage films. People don't seek out crazy John Travolta films. Mine, you put Nick Cage in Battlefield Earth. That's a movie you'd actually watch. That becomes an actually accountable film. I don't think I, I, I can't, think, I I can't think of any circumstance where I would rather where I would watch Battlefield Earth. If Nicholas I, Cage in it because you watch Wicker Man. You watch these crazy B movies that he does because of his draw of insanity. That makes this movie watch. Yeah, but Changing Wicker, him in there Wicker, is nothing. Wicker, Changing him in there Wicker is actually Man, just another movie. Wicker Man's remotely watchable because you have you have A-list actors. You have Helen Burstyn and people surrounding it. It's just crazy that Neil LeBute made that movie. Nicolas Cage replacing John Travolta and Hairspray would be the strangest movie of all time. It would be actually more of a John Waters movie than the original Hairspray. But it would still be, it'd be, still be the same genre. It'd still be it's the same still, movie. Still I, still, the same I feel movie. like these two movies are the same movie. My becomes a different genre. My becomes a blockbuster 2 a.m. rental. I, I'm just sorry, sorry. I don't agree. I think Battlefield Earth is bad no matter which way you look at it. And Cage, yeah, he screams now. He's in a rut now. He's he's in a bad rut now. But back in the, in the 80s and the 90s, he was a great actor. And he did demonstrate a lot of versatility in adaptation, in Peggy Sue Got Married, in uh, Leaving Los 
Las Vegas, and he would have demonstrated all of that versatility to the to the fore in a th wait in in face off playing two completely different characters. The moment he got because that he, Oscar wait, he for played. leaving Las Vegas, he left his talent in the safety deposit box I, at I, the I, bank. I disagree. He took every big paycheck movie, and that's the reason why no one will go see. That's why his movies premiere yeah, on airplanes now, today. There are no stakes in Face Off starring two Nick Cages because when he meets his wife, you don't worry about his wife knowing it's him or not because it is him because it's Nick Cage. That's the same guy. There is no suspension of disbelief because it's the same. There's no worry. Exactly. With There's hairspray, no suspension of disbelief because right, so she bought you, it. It when, makes sense. No, but you wouldn't buy it. It's the same guy. You don't care. With Hairspray, you're watching a guy in a fat suit do a thing, parodying a thing. It's the same. In my film... But you're watching a guy movie. in an alien fat suit right. do a thing. So exactly. you're, you're, your but, same but argument but is countering be, my argument. It's the exact same argument. He has more range to go nuts in Battle for the Earth than he has in Hairspray. Oh, he has more. Oh, no, no, no. John Travolta uh, or Nicolas Cage as a fat housewife from Baltimore singing and dancing with his husband Christopher Walken. That I think trumps the weirdness of Battlefield. L. Ron Hubbard made a religion, and then John Travolta made a movie out of it. I would love to see L. Ron Hubbard get thousands of people to follow him, and then put Nick Cage in it because we'd have a lot more Scientologists. This would not only change the fabric of the movie. Well, that's right there. The that, that guy there is why we don't want the movie. We don't need any more <laughs> Scientologists. Scope of this. Right. We're talking scope. Off. We're All right. Talking Final scope. thoughts: Why yours is weirder, than, or why the other two aren't as weird as yours? Okay, the, or the, is good. Sorry. The, the other two aren't as good as mine because it does not change the fabric of the film at all. Battlefield Earth is still a bad movie. Hairspray, it's a supporting role. Not enough of a chance for him to really make a presence. Cage versus Cage, he, he, you're, you're talking about two completely different roles, two completely different characters. Cage plays them well, makes for more ambitious film, and makes for more ambitious directing on the part of John Woo. Goy? I've seen action movies where they use an actor to play two different parts. I have seen Nicolas Cage play a part similar to that. I have never seen Nicolas Cage. I've seen him as a vampire. I've seen him as like these kooky things. I want to see him as an alien trying to convince people to become a Scientologist. Mine changes the film the most because it is the biggest version of Nick Cage we'd ever have and it would change the movie. Comple well, that's completely wrong because he was already hacking stuff out then bigger than, than John Travolta was in Battlefield Earth. My movie, when have you seen Nicolas Cage play a woman? Ever. It's, it's, this is, this is, this movie, I defy you to go out and ask people on the street of these three movies, what do you want to see? And most people are going to say, Nicolas Cage in a fat suit as a woman? That's what they said about John involved? Travolta, though. Yeah, and that was already the same movie, and they loved it. People but loved him in that. But they're not the same performers. Nicolas Cage crazy trumps John Travolta crazy. Nicolas Cage Which crazy. Which is better Nicolas than Cage crazy. say that he would have played that crazy? So he's better than all three. Okay, but yeah, last thoughts? Uh, that was my That's last Okay. Yeah. Dan. Yeah. Uh, God, this is tough, actually. Not a lot of cleanup here. Uh, I looked for action movies featuring twins. I found Twin Dragons. Double impact. Double impact. Maximum Risk, also starring John Claude Van Damme, and Double <laughs> so, Trouble, which looks really interesting. But that's that's all I could find. I'm sure who, there's more. Who, who's in Double Trouble? Oh, I, I couldn't even tell you. But it looks amazing. <laughs> Uh, I'll, we'll have to, yeah. It's, but Dan, you know, there were a couple of Star Trek episodes where Shatner played the good Kirk and the evil Kirk. And there was also I, the I, Petty Duke yeah. show. The Jake Gyllenhaal movie last year, Enemy, was great with two Jake Gyllenhaal. Oh, that was awesome. Yeah, it was good. Denis Villeneuve. Awesome. Yeah. Oh, it was a brilliant man. movie. Yeah, he's okay. Awesome. Uh, Big fan. Did Arrival? What? Couch oh yeah, chi well I don't I can't listen to you, but sure let's let's hear from the couch. I don't I forgot. Yeah, I can't see you. I was really frustrated that Scott didn't argue that two Nick Cages and Face Off cleans up the penis size issue. He did. <laughs> no, I did. No, no, that was Dan the top did. of my Dan argument. Did. Okay. Dan did that. Any other thoughts, Couch? That was the tip. Does anybody have Matt? Get it? Tans, tans, tans. So since he made that joke about the tip, can we give him the shaft? <laughs> oh! oh! Thank you. Coy, you got a third? Or can we sack him? Oh! 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 Let's go and sack! Beautifully done. Beautifully done. Beautifully done. Comments now. Beautifully done. I can't top it. I feel like an asshole. <laughs> oh! Close. We went all the way around. Jeez. I went down the taint. I went down the taint back to where it belongs. Jesus Christ. Sorry, sorry. Thanksgiving sorry. dinner. Yeah, sorry, folks. Sorry, Grandma. No. Enjoy your stuffing. Okay. Oh! That's okay. not a turkey neck. Uh. <laughs> Dan's, Dan's not of disapproval. <laughs> All right, based on based on the arguments, Mance, good for you, man. You, you gave me something different, and you sold me on it, so you're safe. But I mentioned that you're I safe. had to change it at the last second. You're safe. Yes. It came down to Coy I've seen and that Mark. Movie. Oh. Two fat suits. <laughs> came down to two fat suits, and then I think I was. I was I think Mark got you when you started talking pro Scientology. Now that would have helped everything. And I'm the fact that this range. is even more weird and. 
the fact that you were calling out for being a fat suit, but then when you cut him right back, it's the same fat suit but with dreads. They, they I should thought make... Mark got a little, and you got a little too lost on the on the religion, good or bad, that it was about the performance. Uh, and I think uh, Mark Mark proved it, so I got to give it to Mark. Right. Boy, good, 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 good round of applause boy, for boy. 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 Dave is probably breathing a sigh of relief. Because you were the, you were the one he was oh, most scared around, around, scared around. But you'll have another shot. The fans love you, Coy. I'll round of applause. Good job, Dan. How would you have gone in that round? Uh, again, very difficult round. I think that was that was argued fairly evenly amongst all of them. Uh, I think everybody got lost in the brush a little bit. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah. I don't know. I, I can't. Uh, I can't disagree with you. I kind of want to see face off with Nicolas Cage playing John Travolta from Battlefield Earth <laughs> and from Hairspray. There you go. And they now, switch look at this. Tance is still in the game. Tance. Did you, tats, did you think tats, you, tats, tats. Sometimes I know you don't trust me as a judge, but did you think you'd have the shot here? Or did you think you'd be out early? Uh, I, I thought I'd have the shot. Good. All right, good. I'm yes. glad. Good. All right, you did. Yes. The confidence has worked. Yes, it has. Good. It's going to keep go. going. All right, let's see what happens. Round four, come on up. Joe Starr! Joe Starr! <laughs> Now, see, see, Mance has a little bit of advantage, he, and he's got the he's got the fuel. Let's make a groove. groove. Joe, you're coming in for the first fight. Do it. All right, in. Joe. Just star. Cool, cool shirt, Here we buddy. go, guys. If you, speaking of religions, <laughs> <laughs> nice transition. <laughs> if you had to build a religion around the philosophy of any movie character, which one would you pick? Mark, you're up first. I would pick Christopher Reeve's Superman. Oh. Because you could go Gandhi, you could go Jesus and Passion of the Christ and all the obvious ones, but Christopher Reeve's Superman is someone who will always sacrifice himself to help others, even at the cost of his own happiness. And being able to reach out and help anyone and everyone, no matter color, creed, race, gender, he always tries to do the right thing. And especially now with the way how divided we are as a country, not to get too serious, that's the sort of message that we need. We need someone, and the, the Christopher Reeve Superman is so iconic because he is such a good guy, and he's such a Boy Scout, but that doesn't make him boring or bland. And I would follow that character's mantra in life anywhere because I think he stands up for he does stand up for truth justice and more than the American way the human way Joe the problem with religion is that it's way too serious and that causes way too many problems so I am basing my religion on Ace Ventura <laughs> okay alrighty then sermons uh, spoken out of your butt uh, you teach love and respect for animals and nature. You greet your fellow Ace Venturans by saying Bumblebee Tuna. Everyone wears Hawaiian shirts. Guys, don't take things too seriously. Say alrighty then to your day. Ace Venturaism. Alrighty then. Mance. All right, well, we you're should, already on board. Yeah. We should switch t-shirts, buddy, because I'm going to go with Yoda. Now, the Force became a thing in the first Star Wars movie, but it really went to another level in The Empire Strikes Back. That is because of Yoda. When Yoda was teaching Luke the ways of the Force, he was teaching us too. So much of what he said made sense, not just in the galaxy of far, far away, but in the here and now. Wars not make one great. You must, ch you feel the Force around you. Size matters not. Insert penis joke here. <laughs> mind, mind what you have learned. Save you it can. Yoda's philosophy, the force, should be a religion. And if you look around you, it already is. Yeah, it's called Buddhism. Go ahead. Well, there you go. Um, okay, the, the, the Ace Ventura thing, does that lead to the respect to animals? Does that lead to bestiality? Do they do they elevate animals? We can get we can get really. That's, what a weird thing to jump to, Mark. But <laughs> at the same time, well, not a weird thing for Mark well, to I'm jump to. I'm talking about religion, so religions go to Reeves, extremes. Christopher Reeve's Superman uh, gave up his powers while horrible things were going in the, on in the world, so that he could have sex with Lois Lane. That he gave up his powers so that he could be with her. Like that. That's a terrible religion. And then, just drop everything and, if there's but, something that you really he, want. And then when he realized his mistake, he made her forget, and he went back to the way things so were. He learned from his mistake. This is a guy. He does it when this guy the, the, he he turned the world around so that he could fix a mistake. This this is a religion. This is irresponsible. No, don't learn from your mistakes. Don't grow from your mistakes. Eh, spin the world around. Meanwhile, do or do not. There is no try. We learn from failure. Trying is great. Yoda's a jerk. Do or do not. That, that's a dumb thing. It, war does not make one great. But in the prequels, all that dude does is flip and cartwheel and fight people. He's a hypocrite. Yes, and and the fact that war does not make people great in a franchise called Star Wars. 
Well, exactly. Right. That, that, that doesn't make a whole okay. lot of sense. And Buddha and Buddha said it better than Yoda, and he said it in correct order okay, of verbs and nouns. Okay, the name of the nouns. question is a philosophy of a movie character. I'm not talking about the title of a film. I'm not talking about the prequels. We've already said that the philosophy is terrible wait a minute. and I, hypocritical. Uh, well, talk about a philosophy that's terrible. Your philosophy is a joke, and yours, my friend, Superman is a great guy. He's a great role model, but by no way is that a religion. The Force is a religion. People are practicing it now. Jokes are bad. You're on a comedy you know, you're movie channel, it, you're Mark comparing Scott it to Mance. Buddhism? Wait, you're comparing it to Buddhism? You, you. I'm not so, comparing it to Buddhism. I think George Lucas highlighted his Buddhism for dummies well, and made Yoda talk I, backwards. Then I rest my Ace case. Ventura loves, I rest my case. You made my argument, buddy. Ace Thank Vent, you. Ace Ventura uh, loves animals, respects nature. Uh, he helps people when they're down. You can count on him. He, he talks will, out of his butt. He, yeah, yeah, exactly. Talks, People right. take themselves way too seriously. Joe, are you going to do the rest of your fight from your butt? Sh yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> oh, wait, wait, wait. Am I helping you, help you with the chair? I got you. I got Who you. doesn't make one great? I'm a big green hypocrite. <laughs> oh. Right here. Let's know what the ass says. Let's know what the ass says. I'm Yoda. Don't bother trying. Either you can do it or you suck. No, I'm do. Yoda. Or do ah! not. Do or do not. There is no try. It's like in. in Hi, position. you know it's easy being brave if you're Superman because nothing can kill you. <laughs> Again. Ah! This is funny. This is You funny. know what's great about talking about your butt? It means you need your meds. <laughs> this is funny. All right, but you it's not the point. something to very uncomfortable. No though. one is going to adapt Ace Mature's philosophy into a religion. Again, Superman. Why wouldn't you? Superman. It's an incredible nice chill religion. Let me think of, you're right. You know what? Wars do not make one great. Wars suck. And you know what? Then you just. You're just countering what your 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 guru says. Well, that dude about? fought all the time he, in the prequels. Well, I'm not talking about the prequels. I'm talking about You're the talking Empire about the character Strikes Back. and the character, about the character we can character. find the characters are. The character was introduced in the Empire Strikes Back. That was his first movie. Well, well, Everything the chronology that he said, doesn't. I'm hearing a lot of defense. Give me some offense. Why are these two not better, Miss Scott? Well, again, why are they, why are these two not better yes. than mine? Well, for one thing, Superman, he's an icon, but it's not a religion. Talking out of your ass, not a religion. Case no, I was Catholic, so that actually is a religion. <laughs> Oh. I see your point. <laughs> and uh, yeah, disapproval, Dan, Dan's disapproval looks is on point today. It's on fleek. We need to have memes of just his face. And you just said on fleek. Can we vote you off? <laughs> we need a Yoda, new judge over here. Yoda has already inspired people around the world to adapt the force into a religion. I mean, maybe it goes a little too is far with right, some people. Mark. Well, that sounds crazy to me if they're yeah, actually no. people that worship Yoda. Have you ever been Superman, to Star Wars Celebration? Superman, unlike most religions, most religions are about a figurehead and about bowing to that figurehead. The thing that's great about Superman as a philosophy slash religion and Yoda's Yoda's religion, the Force, is it's basically Buddhism. It's also celibacy Buddhism. and extremes, which yeah. is already but, not good. But Superman, all these other religions are about, well, his religion is about worshipping someone else, someone a higher power. No, no, it's about, Superman is about, you the had your time, you can talk about penises in a minute. <laughs> um, Superman wow, is Mark about, just told you to stop talking about penises. I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, this election turned everything. The polls are reversed. It's crazy. I'm going to I'm gonna go date a woman now. That's not going to happen. Um, Good, sorry. Um, but uh, but Superman's philosophy is about about the the power within the good that we all have within us, and that is a message that transcends dogma and transcends rules. The fact that living to be the best person you can and to put other people before you is a great timeless message, regardless of whether it is officially a religion with a Bible or not. It is a it is a personal level of faith that I think is really inspirational. All right, well, I want to. I feel like uh, Joe got some good pits on both of you. We got tell me about why the celibacy and the trying is not good. Scott, and tell me why uh, it's okay to spin the world back and forth and uh, wait, give wait it up for a girl. For, first of all, the force, you're telling me the force is from another power? The force comes from within. The force comes from within. From the Chlorians. But, depends but, on which the, movie you're watching. It depends on, but if you're watching The Empire Strikes Back, where the character was introduced in 1980, not in 1999, the, the Phantom Menace, which is a shitty Enough movie. Enough regurgitating facts. On. Give us a you point. Had, you had your chance. I, I'm telling you mine. <laughs> Everything, he's teaching Luke the ways of the force. He is making Luke become a better person. Luke is believing within himself, and he believes himself to the point where he ultimately triumphs over evil, over the dark side of the force. That is because everything that Yoda taught him as a religion was something that people watching the movie also related to and understood and adapted for themselves. If Yoda's such a good leader and such a powerful force to lead people in hope, why does he go hide in a swamp for a hundred years? What's that got to do with his religion? 
He was banished because the empire took over and he went into hiding. Because he's a coward. His time. His religion came. is also way too demanding. It's very, it's very similar to uh, Southern Baptist fundamentalism or Catholicism, where uh, uh, this leads to the dark side and this leads is to the dark true? side. You can't, and do, you that. You can't do that. You can't do that. You can't do that. It's all about oppression. It's all about oppression. Final thoughts on Superman, Scott. Superman is a great role model, but he's not a religion. He's a he's an icon, but he's not his. It's not a philosophy. It's someone you want to look up to as a mentor, but it's just not a religion. The Force is a religion. Joe? Uh, I, I think Superman's religion uh, immediately falls apart uh, without the superpowers. Uh, neither, uh, you guys got real caught up on butts. Uh, well, neither, I'm already hung neither, up on penises, so. Neither, you know. look, look, this is not taking yourself too seriously. Smiling, laughing through your day, respecting nature, respecting the earth, uh, respecting your fellow man, and being uh, loyal and uh, someone you can count on. Mark? And vaguely schizophrenic. Um, I, I just think ultimately that the the me what is the message boiled down of all these potential religions? And I ultimately think that the religion that Superman would represent is a pure, simpler, more attainable thing for everyone, and that is inspirational that we can all we can all reach. I don't think that's possible. Both you guys are both talking out of your ass. Oh my god! That was, <laughs> I knew that, that joke was, was coming. That was tough. That was a fight. That was a fight. That was a fight. Guys on the couch, thoughts? Good fight. Thought. Good fight. Got a real good fight. Good fight. Oh yeah, Joe talked out of his butt. That made me laugh. <laughs> Which cop? America, ladies and gentlemen. When so many religions do talk out of their ass. Joe actually did it. It was beautiful. <laughs> it was pretty genius. Uh, go ahead, type. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Ace Ventura has maybe respect for his fellow man, but maybe not respect for any trans people at all. Mm. Ooh. It's pretty transphobic. So, well, sadly, no one said that. Yep. Dan. So no, one on the, no one on the table. Right. I got it based on what they I've said. Got some, I mean, I have some but facts. True. I have I have a clear. It could have been a good take out if someone had pulled, pulled that out. I guess just say non-favorite. I have a clear non-favorite, but uh, I will say that Jediism is a religion, not Yoda specifically. There's a Temple of the Jedi Order, is an official tax-exempt organization. Uh, Superman may not be a god, but Raoism is Krypton's religion. They worship the sun god Rao. <laughs> Okay. Row. Sometimes Row. it was a long argument. I had to fill my time over here. Uh, <laughs> Look, somehow. I think uh, uh, I'm giving it to Joe. <laughs> Joe's safe. Yeah. Joe's safe. I think he sort of made a mockery of it all, but did something kind of genius with it. And uh, then I got caught up in really the negatives in both Bumble Superman Bituna. and Yoda is really where it came down to. So that's where I was listening to. Because they both come with a lot of, uh, you know, big questions. So, oh, man, that's really tough. Uh, I think I got to go with Mark, though. I think Scott, I think Scott got too hung up and uh, had to play a lot of defense, and I didn't hear enough offense, and I even tried and... Uh, I just I heard too many good hits against Yoda. I gotta take Yoda out. I'm sorry, man. It's all right. Round of applause. Dude, you made it. Four rounds. As soon as I, that fight got hard. As soon as you talked out of the ass, I knew I was done. That was amazing. It was Mark was on the ropes there for a moment, but I was listening to the end. It, this show I have to say is that this show is obsessed with asses and penises. <laughs> Plus, yeah, you've been talking a lot about penises. And by this not. show, you mean you. Yes. <laughs> Round of applause for Scott, man. Scott, Scott man. you get to help decide who wins. You get to make the vote on who wins. So stick around. Next up, it's time for Spenny G! Who, who, Dan? So who was your uh, clear? Who would you have picked? I think that I think it was clearly, uh, unfortunately, I think Mance was the clear choice to uh, be eliminated. They they hammered him. They, they hammered did him really hammer him hard on Yoda, and I felt like that. He was, was uh, on the ropes a lot, and I didn't feel like he got enough big swings. Joe, wow! I thought you were going to be gone, and then you committed. <laughs> Kudos. You can't. You can't count did not know Ace I wanted Ventura. to have the religion of Ace Ventura. <laughs> Round five. Okay, this is it. This is a fun one. I'm very excited. Improve a movie by swapping out a main character with a talking dog. <laughs> Guys, how do we do this? I want you to improve a movie because you have to swap out a main character with a talking dog. And who went first last time? So I think it's you, Joe. You're up first. So uh, there are a lot of movies I thought about that could be improved by uh, replacing a main character with a talking dog. But there's only one that you can really improve, and that is Spielberg's Saving Private Ryan. Jeez. I am <laughs> replacing Matt Damon's Private Ryan with a talking golden retriever named Ryan. Here's how this improves Saving Private Ryan. 
It is so unrealistic that they would send a whole unit of dudes to go out and save some guy just because he's some poor lady's last son. That's not... I, Oof, I, I can't get wow. behind that. Oof. No, that guy... He's on the ropes. <laughs> no, that guy's out there. He, 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 no he, one left behind, Joe. He's, he's, yeah. sacrificing Jesus. Just, he's sacrificing just as much as everybody else out there. He even says so himself. That's, that's why he doesn't leave. But I can understand why you would send a crack team of World War II soldiers to to save a talking dog. The uh, How could you how could you turn your back on a talking dog deep behind enemy lines? Uh, Can I get out of the shot while he demeans our veterans more? Yes. No, no, no. This talking dog, there are dogs. There are dogs in our armed services and this dog has served with distinction. Oh, Joe. Just like <laughs> Are there not dogs in our armed services? Well, Cuz there are. I don't think we want to say so that the Joe's veterans out. aren't worthy yeah. of saving too. <laughs> Do what? I think we want to make sure the veterans are worth saving too. Oh Jesus, Internet! Of course, veterans are worth saving. It's a fucking question about a talking dog, and this right. talking dog improves Saving Private Ryan. All right. Well, he committed. Spencer, it's your turn. <laughs> what I miss? You are gonna replace the main character with a talking dog. Okay. Uh, all right, whatever just happened. I'm gonna shake that off. Uh, like a dog. Like no, a you dog. know what, like Joe, you're out of here. <laughs> yeah, <that's, laughs> get out of here. Yeah. Get back in here, man. Yeah. Who, who, who oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, you, you got Jenny McCarthy. Oh. Mance, you get a second shot. <laughs> Mance. Mance, you're back in the game. Oh, wow. If I can do it last show, I'm doing it this show. No one disrespects our veterans. Get the hell out of here, Joe Star. Uh, Mance is back Mance in the game. Mance is back. the stupidest thing. <laughs> So if this, if this is happening, oh, the Electoral College better change their votes in two weeks. <laughs> Trump better not get the Electoral right, College if we're doing we're this bullshit. Down, so, Matt, oh you're gonna gosh. go last. You okay. get to swap in your talk. I, I don't want to just throw out this round. This is too fun a round. We can't tarnish our veterans. Uh, and I knew that was where this was gonna happen. That was based on a true story, by the way. And so it was based on a true story, yeah. yeah. Based on a true story. <laughs> Joe is leaving. He's too upset. Joe is a wonderful wow. person. He didn't mean it, but Man, I just knew. Back in the game. I knew the fight was going to turn dark. Do no, you think this is some kind of a game? <laughs> it's some type of entertainment show. <laughs> now here's the funny thing. I just realized I'm also replacing a veteran with a dog. Oh god. <laughs> but I don't think it's as offensive. I think I have a shot to change it, Spencer. No, I want to. I want to commit to this. Uh, I'm replacing a character whose prime traits are loyalty and viciousness and tenaciousness, and uh, that is are, are very dog-like, and uh, that's what why I am replacing ex-CIA agent Brian Mills, Liam Neeson, in Taken okay. with a talking dog. <laughs> All right. It's not a true story. <laughs> not, a, not, a, okay. not a true story, as oh, far oh, as we know. Um, but he's a talking dog with a particular set of skills. Brian, Brian Mills? Brian Mills, Barking okay. Mills, and his, uh, I, or something. And uh, uh, when his owner, Kim, is kidnapped, he wages a one-pup path of destruction across <laughs> Europe to fetch his best friend back from Is he sex on the phone? I get that. Yeah, That's he barks good. in the... He, he, it's Liam Neeson is doing the voice still. Okay. So it's Liam Neeson's voice. What kind of dog? Like, what kind of a dog? A Doberman. He's oh, a Doberman. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Good answer there. So should never All right, we'll come back. Uh, Mark, who are you replacing with the talking dog? Well, I wanted to replace someone in a big movie who would be legitimately better with a dog, a performance that was so bad that even the worst dog actor could benefit, <laughs> make it better. And my choice is Charlie Hunnam in Pacific Rim. Boo! Boo! Oh, wow. Boo! Well, the couch is not happy. He's, pre Boo! he's pretty, Sasha, but he shouldn't speak. How would he get into the, the Jaeger? Well, it would be called... Well, <laughs> It would be Thank like you, a, Andy. it would be like a hamster. Sorry, I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> it would be like a hamster wheel sort of thing. Uh, okay, but for so a different and, apparatus. And, 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 and it would change. And it would change the title to Pacific Rim. Mm. Oh, what's uh, he did there? Yeah. And he'd be fighting giant cat monsters, so it would be mutter huh. chaos. <laughs> and there would be catastrophes all over the world. <laughs> all right. And, be a gold, are two good and, and a golden so retriever. Okay, Mance, you're back in. Got Mance a second back chance in. of life. I'm using an answer I did not think I was going to get to, but I am proud to say that I would replace Superman with a dog in Batman v Superman. <laughs> Because, as we know, the movies in the DC Cinematic Universe take themselves a little too seriously. So you replace, you replace Superman, okay, first of all, Henry Cavill, great looking guy, looks like Superman, but he can't act his way out of a paper bag. He is actually just as good as uh, Charlie Hunnam, which is to say he's not well, as good of an actor at all. That's completely not true. Meanwhile, play, replacing Superman with a dog? First of all, that makes him crypto, which is actually part of the DC Universe, so that fits. It would also make Batman v Superman 
Superman, first of all, a better film because it would be more fun, it would have humor, it would have heart, and in the end, it would be a Batman's best friend. Does, does, have, does uh, Amy Adams jump in the bathtub? I was going to say, you have a dog having does sex he, with Amy Adams well, in the no, tub. I want to ask, does he jump in the da- bathtub? Does he jump in the bathtub? Uh, no, I don't think he's going to go there. Okay, so we're going to a departure from we're, we're, Yes, okay. we're, we're, we're departing. Oh, it's it's a a so it so we can change the, the tone of the movie? This would replace the character, not rewrite the script. But, but wait a minute. Amy Ass is, is impressed with, yeah, Super Dog, with yeah. Super Dog's Improve penis. Improve the movie by swapping out a main character mm. with a talking dog. Uh, so the dog's got to jump in the fucking yeah, you tub. you got to keep the script going. Okay, yeah. well, that certainly does make the movie really interesting, doesn't it? <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah. Then, yeah. It, then it becomes the Ace Ventura religion. She licks the licks earlier. But again, like Batman v Dogs Superman. Do that. Batman v you Superman. You put peanut butter where? Like most of these films, like most of the films in the DC Cinematic Universe, unfortunately, they take themselves too seriously. They're too dark. They're not fun. Right, what this do you guys would think? still be a dog. That would be a bad dog, sir. Bad dog for not saving those people in the Batman's Congress. It would be Batman's best friend. Get it? Batman's no, best friend. No, he still would have fought Batman. He still would have let people but, explode and just sat there looking like a depressed ass dog while people died around him. No, That's a sad movie. No, still, this, he would. He, but he would have stepped up to the plate more. Super dog. Crypto, you know, Batman would have been like, actually, you know what? What am I doing? I shouldn't be jealous that Super Dog. That has Batman would have murdered his dog in a heartbeat. It would have given Batman more heart. He would have broken would have that dog's a better neck. Team, you know, Superman would Mark. have healed. Well, Batman, Batman? Already, Batman already has a dog in canon. He has Ace the Bat Hound as well as the Bat Cow, so he's nice. already got some pets. So having another pet in there wouldn't really make that much but, of a but difference. But he's not in the film. Bat Dog is not in the film. We're talking what? maybe in the comics. Then, then we should go commit to the whole thing and have it be Ace the no, Bat no, no. Hound you versus got, you're, We're talking Crypto. about the movie, and then what, we're talking about uh, what? Well, then if we're talking movie, about if we're talking about the movie, that movie. Amy, then if we're talking about the movie, then Amy Adams has to have sex with a dog. Okay, great. Let's go. <laughs> well, for they it. don't have sex. They kiss. They, they, they kiss. have sex. Right, you know, they have dog is licking her, licking her. They're they're living together and they're bathing together. They're not just. How many people don't take baths with their dogs? I'm just saying. Come on, you take. Who, who are you, your you, friends? You give you give a dog a bath, and then you wind up taking the bath Anyone too on the because couch the dog ever takes a bath for the dog. <laughs> Were you? Were you? Were you? I did a couple weeks ago. I had to like wash him, so I Thank kind you. of. I combined. I didn't do a full bath, but it was a little weird. You're were you? Were you? Cold, buddy boy. Were you? Thank you were close. Were you fully nude? <laughs> Not fully nude. Okay, doesn't count. <laughs> well, if he's in the bath and he's getting all yeah, lathered no, up and I, everything. My cat has jumped in the shower with me. This is cool. cat, And that's a cat. Max, See, our producer like, says he's back right, Okay, your so guys' movies possible. are making your weird, sad movies either weirder or sadder. <laughs> I want to talk about why a dog makes Taken better. Right, Liam ahead. Neeson sounds like an action hero. He does not move like an action hero. They need to cut and do shaky cam. It wasn't a stylistic choice. It's a choice because he's 60 years old and he can't fight. But, uh, but, but a dog can rip a throat. But the a, a Doberman great. could rip a throat of a guy that looks like an Uber driver all over Europe. But it's going to look awesome. The movie was already great. He proved that he can be an action hero at 60. With, but a, they made with five a lot more, of creative they, editing. They made, they made two it's, more sequels. I'm thinking it. like, it's going to take a lot of creative editing to make it look like a Doberman can fight fight spies and kidnappers. It's no, going to take a not. lot of creative it's editing. Gonna, you just say whatever the word for kill is in German, right. and it's over. Why is a Pacific Rim, Pacific Rim, going to be better than these two? <laughs> because it'll, because it'll in, infinitely improve the performances. You'll have a lead you actually care about and are invested in and have an emotional connection to. The robots in that movie are more versatile than Charlie Hunnam. And Hunt. again, why is yours better than theirs? Because because you, you're you're turning you're turning a boring super a boring a, a boring superhero Superman in the in the DC cinematic universe by making him a dog you're making him a character that people are going to love. They're going to root for. It's going to be fun and funny and have a lot of heart. Do you guys agree with that? It's not going to be, not fun, gonna be fun, fun or funny and because funny. we're not changing the script. It yeah. absolutely is going to be fun and funny. You're going to have super dog crypto. It's hilarious. Side by side with it's Batman. hilarious. When Doomsday stabs the dog through the chest. Whoa, hey kids! When they, and America's when, when gonna crypto, nuke a dog in space crypto, in your movie. They're gonna crypto, say, that dog's up in space. Crypto, Shit, we gotta nuke super it. Do, su- crypto, super dog. Everyone wants super Dan, dog in a film, and this yeah. would happen. Dan, any thoughts? Um. <laughs> I, I, Liam Neeson was only 56 when they made Taken. Uh, how, I mean, you can't really fact check this one. Yeah. Um, okay. <laughs> uh, sorry, man. So you had a second shot, but Damn. I think uh, the other two were a little bit more interesting to listen to. Yours well, thanks for having me back. Thanks but for hey, having you got a second shot. shot. Thanks for the second, second shot. shot. Great to see you guys. Man. Great to see you guys. I'm, I'm glad twice. we got to hear uh, Pacific, Pacific Rim and Taken. Those were good. Dan, what would you have done that round? Yeah, I, uh, Mance, uh, as ever, was so uh, idealistic and wanted to see the movie he wanted to see, but that was not the question. It was recasting a movie. So, so yeah. Yep. All right, here we go. Mike Carlson, step on in. Woo! Woo! 
my notes for the last round just say, bad dog had sex with Lois Lane. <laughs> Uh, is Joe Star okay? Can someone give him a hug? Oh, oh he's, he's gone. gone. Left. Joe's he's left, left in, uh, in anger. <laughs> Joe's gone and he's not coming back. <laughs> we all love you, Joe. Happened to me last I, time, I, man. We, he, he didn't Joe mean what he was, where he was heading with that. Uh, all right. This, this show is very silly. Yes. Welcome to the silly show. So, I don't know if it's my cup of tea, quite frankly. <laughs> <laughs> Says the man who Skyped in. While Dan uh, mimicked your your mouth, that was Look. dead serious. I was not. That was not <laughs> funny at all. That was a great one. All right, uh, here we go, guys. Final round here before the final. So Mike, you, you got the biggest advantage here. Whether it's an advantage or not, you haven't you've been you haven't been able to to get your blood boiling yet. Yeah, my blood is not boiling. So here we go. We'll see if it works. Uh, Mark, congrats. You made it to the last round. Spencer, you too. We're here, guys. Uh, after this, you will all help me decide who wins in the speed round. All right, here we go. Question so, number six. So just to be clear, one person will be kicked off, and then there will be a speed round for the Correct, last bit? Correct, for okay. the last two. Thank you. You got it. Uh, okay. And Okay, got it. Guys, this is the last question before the speed round. Hmm. In honor of Thanksgiving, what movie family would you want to be part of? Spencer, you're first. Uh, I'm first, so I go with The Incredibles. Um, mm -hmm. I think they are a family where you get superpowers for being born into them. Uh, they are a family that love each other. They are a family that complement each other well. They are a family that are willing to sacrifice what makes them special for the good of their children. Uh, they're loyal, they're kind to each other, they learn, they grow, they're loving. They're, they are the definition of functional. They are not a dysfunctional family, and they can fly and shoot stuff at, with their brain. So. Mark. Uh, for all those reasons. Um, this was another one where we all picked The Incredibles before. Uh, so um, my second choice was The House of L, su the Superman family. Um, there aren't a lot of them left. There's a Superman and his cousin, and depending on the continuity. But once again, going kind of riffing on what I said about the religion is the Superman family, the House of L, is very, they're, they're the Kennedys of superhero aliens. They want to help people. They want to put other people before them. They want to elevate everyone. You're going Christopher Reeve, Marlon Brando, that era? Yeah, okay. yeah, that era, that era. And... Um, uh, and you know, it's just it's just a thing where they're, they they've experienced tragedy, they've experienced loss. So they know the value of family. They know the value of fin friendship and support and camaraderie. And I think, much like the Incredibles, they are born into these powers that they didn't necessarily ask for, and they do good things in public service with them. Mike, look, I picked um, the family that would be the most fun to be in. I'm talking about the Von Trapp family from The Sound of Music. <laughs> All right. This is a family that is a tight knit unit. This is a father who is disciplined yet fair. Okay. <laughs> he starts out a little hard nosed, but a, a young, a lovely young woman opens his eyes to the world. Now, I would love to be part of the music industry. That's what this would lead to. You're in a family band. You have a lot of kids around. You have a lot of love. And now, in this scenario, if I'm in the family, I'm little Heinz von Trapp, and okay. I am the twin sibling of Liesel. <laughs> Okay. All right, guys, fight it out. <laughs> All right, The Incredibles is unsafe. It's un. Why would you? You're getting attacked constantly. This would be a nightmare, and it's actually the unsafe. same thing. The Von Trapps are escaping the Nazis, the Nazis through the and your they planet had, is about to explode. They had, um, they're already on the planet. They're they already on Earth. That happened before. With the, Nazis. All the elves are, are transporting to Earth. I said the ones that are right cannon the like ones that. that I, no, well, then Superman the only one that survived is Superman, Superman and his cousin. Superman and Supergirl. That's, that's a not family. a family. That's, oh, a, rel that's a relative. Oh, 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 that's a relative, oh, 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 not a family. I guess Thanksgiving dinners are tense at your house. Cousins barely count. Oh. Sorry to Matt and Jennifer and Max. <laughs> and, and, and your guy, and your guy, Baron Von Trapp, seduced a nun. That, yeah, she that's... was already kind of giving up the whole nun thing. Mark. Oh, so she, she was a, so, she, so, so she was asking for it. Whoa. No, she, she was asking for a loving marriage. Yes, and to God. And, and then he broke that well, up. He came well, between her Mark, and God. Did you see the movie? She sang in the mountains. This was a woman who was not committed to that life. She is. A, she oh, needed no, something. Now yeah, you're, that now, marriage now is not going to last. Now you're mansplaining for her. <laughs> Those are. And, and Mark, stop pretending to be woke. <laughs> <laughs> and and the, and the part about the Von Trapp family that's the creepiest is they're all homeschooled. Mm -hmm. Yes, it would be lovely. Ooh. You don't have to deal with that's bullies. like the Manson family. <laughs> no, that they're not the Manson family. There's, the singing is even better. They're less than the interesting family. than the Manson sorry, family. The Von Trapp's hey, the this, Charles you have Manson produced singing, a Beach Boys record. Free spirit, and you have this hard ass disciplinarian. I give that marriage like a year tops. If the Nazis don't split it up, the Resentment is going to build and build and build. The and moment, that family is the moment break. she squeezes out a kid of her own, he's going to cheat on her with the next nineteen-year-old. She year did old have his kid. That's what happened later on. They were real people. 
And when he heard the sweet sound of music, he changed, okay? He was still a disciplinarian, he but still he still Hitler, but he wasn't sure he anymore. He did not like Hitler. They got out of there. They got out of Austria. There was one thing, there was one threat, and they took care of it, and then they lived a great life. These two are constantly under threat. Why would I'm you sorry, when you picked a Nazi a family under threat by Nazis, you can't pick a we, syndrome as, as being even we comparable. We all have a problem or at least two our, in our <laughs> lives. At least our two families have superpowers yeah, that can, can fight these it. defenses. This is a bunch of underfed kids who are homeschooled yeah, by yeah, a nun. Do? Dance the Nazis away? I would argue that the most powerful thing is music. Well, uh. you'd, well you'd be, I, would, I would say talk to the 7 million people that died by the Nazis, and they might argue with you a little. And Mark, I, would, I don't for Superman, think that I was what we were talking I, about. I, 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 I picked, don't think singing the Nazis away ever worked, but I would have okay. picked the Kents if you're going to pick Superman's family. They're loving and they're supportive. The L's are like weird scientist nerds who are so I'm picking the two removed. L's that survived. I'm picking Superman and Supergirl. They are cousins. Oh, yeah, I need they are guidance. family Who members. am I going to turn to? My living yeah. younger cousin. Mark that's not going to guide you through life. And the Incredibles wouldn't exist if Superman hadn't been created. Superman heroes all started with him, That's so that family meta. wouldn't even... No, oh, yeah, we're not talking about Come that, on. Come on, Mark. This is a no-fact zone. <laughs> no, it's your... Dude. Look, Mark has picked a very depressing scenario to be born into, okay? Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, you're people. just like Anne trudging, Frank time, trudging well, through the Alps barefoot with a banjo and a nun who got seduced by problem. my dad. They went through the mountains and then they... A went little to, bit of a problem. They went to Vermont Hitler. and they lived a nice Hitler. life in Vermont. A little bit of a problem. And they had to sing while they did it, adding insult They had to tour county fairs. That's a horrible life. Have you ever been sad and tried to sing a song it's great it's awful it's great it depends what singing song through it is, tears but... is not a good look and uh, and going to your cousin for help is just the last resort final thoughts well, I, what, you don't uh, like your cousins my final do. thoughts uh, Mike final thoughts I, I want to live I don't want to be constantly waking up because I'm under attack from a supervillain. I want to live with a song in my heart. Hitler is the biggest supervillain ever. <laughs> um, I, I think that the, the, the L's, the surviving L's, have survived tragedy. They survived loss, and they've risen above that, and they've become contributing to society, and they are great role models. Damn. I saw you struggle a couple of them there. <laughs> What do, uh, I don't know. <laughs> don't give us that any Holocaust weird. facts. Let's just, no, let's just No, I wish you hadn't, Mark. <laughs> he started uh, it. He brought the Nazis uh, no, up to no, it. He, he no, said I you didn't. can sing Nazis away. <laughs> I didn't say that. No, he didn't. Uh, <laughs> he implied yeah, it. I don't know. Uh, I'm leaning one way in my head. I have no facts to right. check. Well, here's where I'm leaning. It, it, it sort of left with us. Uh, I think Spencer really did a good job, and then... When he told you, Mark, that you should have picked the Kents, mm -hmm. it was a really sort of defining moment for me in the argument. And I think uh, Mike's argument that they're const both of these are constantly under threat, constantly under threat. Uh, I'm sorry, I gotta let you go, Mark. Very good challenge, time that you made oh, it man. very far. <laughs> Mark and Draco, a round of applause. Do I leave the boys today? Yeah, you get to go sit on the couch, and then you're gonna help decide who wins awesome. between these two. Yeah, do, I go do you over want here? them in Is different spots, or are they in a good spot? Okay. Fine. All right. Guys, you made it to the finals. Dan, what would you have done there? Yeah, I think I would have gone that way as well. Yeah, I, I think the decimation of the entire family, the fact that they're all gone except for two, uh, those were good uh, points. Guys, wow, Mike, wow, the last two. you're here. This is Thanks it. to the one fans you, for helping us make yeah, this, your advantages make us this far. Uh, one yeah, of you will have the shot to win this. Are you nervous? Uh, you know, mildly. Uh, yeah, I've, I, I feel like this is what I'm the worst at, so I'm, I'm yeah. resigned. Yeah, neither to, of uh, you are very good at this. Let's be honest. I, <laughs> I, I would disagree. I'm, I'm terrible yeah, at the you, actual game, you turn around, and I end you up do. turning you around in the end. Right, yeah. That's fair. All right. Uh, but Spencer, you've had a lot of practice. A lot of trouble, you've yeah. You've been down. What did they say? Eight eight losses? In a row. <laughs> Make it nine after yesterday. So, so we start clean here as far as points. Clean. Okay. No points have been right. accumulated. Now, guys, on the couch. This is where things get interesting. You will be helping me decide who wins. We can it's do like that. Survivor. Okay? We can do that. We're like the Von Trapp family on this couch. Okay, so you guys will help determine. We got this. We got this. You guys will help. So I hope you listen to the arguments carefully, and I will come to you for verdicts. And um, we'll go from there. Guys, there will be two movies on the screen from our bargain bin. I don't know, mm. Samantha, I'll tell you when they come in, but you will have to tell me which of these two we should buy. You'll see them up there in a minute. Uh, hopefully, are they, you know how to do it. Oh, one second, JT's gotten this switched. Uh, why don't I go to question two? Are you ready? Are you ready? Go to two. Okay, I'm going to go to two. Right. I said that. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, we'll come back to the bargain bin. Switching the order. Because uh, JT was over there and we needed uh, different assets. Okay, here we go. Number two. But number one. <laughs> <laughs> Who will win an Oscar first? You'll have to defend why. Will Ferrell or Seth Rogen? Seth Rogen. Will Ferrell. Okay, Mike. Seth Rogen. Hold on, sorry. sorry. Uh, you got 
Uh, you said Will? Mm -hmm. no, you said, I know you said Seth Rogen, Mike, right? I said Seth Rogen, yes. Okay, go ahead, uh, and Spencer has Will Ferrell. You'll have 20 seconds. Time starts when you begin speaking. And me first. Uh, Seth Rogen is already pursuing, like, uh, uh, the, the Steve Jobs movies. He's doing different types of things, and he's also producing things like Preacher. He has a very wide variety of things he's making, so he's going to pop up in a wide variety of things. Will Ferrell's tried uh, drama, but he hasn't done something as, like, he hasn't gone all over the place. He's mostly stuck to these comedies, so I think Seth Rogen, just by chance, the amount of things he's putting on the table will be able to... Okay. Spencer for Will yeah. Ferrell. Well, they've both mainly done comedies, and Will Ferrell has also tried dramatic roles. I think it was called Stranger Than Fiction, the uh, the one where he had the voiceover that was actually a good uh, dramatic Will Ferrell role. Uh, I think he's coming to the end of his comedic lifespan and is looking to branch out into more serious stuff. Uh, I don't think P uh, Seth Rogen tried to be an action hero. He's tried to do other things like in Green Hornet, and he's failed, and he's gone back to comedy. That's the well he keeps going back to. Ten seconds when you begin speaking, Mike. I hope you're listening on the couch. Uh, Will Ferrell just done Stranger the Fiction, which is already years and years ago, and I haven't seen him try something some something in that vein. So all the stuff he's doing, I don't think is something that the Oscars even think about. Seth Rogen, I think, is younger, has much more of a chance to actually go to the Oscars. Just looking at their personas and their performance and what they bring to it, to the table, I see more of a sadness and more of a depth to Will Ferrell. Was Seth Rogen, I just think stoner, I just think goofy, I think of his laugh. I don't buy him in a dramatic role as much as I buy Will Ferrell. Woo! All right, I have a leaning, but I want to go to the couch over there. What are you guys thinking? Uh, I actually thought this one would be really clear cut. I'm a little bummed that both of you guys were talking about acting roles, but Mike, because I think Seth could win for writing, but the fact that Mike brought up that he's producing, that he's doing Preacher, that they're, that he's younger, I think that swayed the argument. Mance? I agree. I, I like your argument for Seth Rogen better. That's why I'm going with Seth. Thank you. Mark? Uh, I go for Will Ferrell. Thank you, Mark. Mark's mad at me. Logically, Will Ferrell, but argument-wise, I feel like the Rogan argument is a little stronger. JTE. Yeah, I'm right there with him. Argument-wise, the producing, the longevity, got to go. Seth Rogan. All right. All right. Consensus takes it. I'm going to let him have it. That uh, gives you the first point, Mike. <laughs> so tense. So tense. <laughs> too tense. Are we too ready tense to yeah. Okay, here we go. We're back to the bargain bin. You're going to see two. Hold on. Don't show yet. You'll see two movies uh, when they go up there. First one to yell out the title first gets that choice. Uh, here they go. Oh, now you see me too. <laughs> oh. <laughs> my big fat. Now you Greek see me too. too. And my, uh, for Spencer, uh, that means. Uh, so Mike, you get my big fat Greek wedding too. Thank you. <laughs> and I'll be honest, I have not seen either of them. <laughs> oh, you're the only one here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, Spencer, you were heard first, so your time starts when you begin speaking. Uh, I love heist movies, no matter how dumb they are. I think there's just something enjoyable about them. We don't get that many of them, so I'm happy to see more. I think it was genius to cast Daniel Radcliffe, Harry Potter, as a bumbling magician. I think that's a genius piece of casting. I think it's a good turn your brain off and enjoy it. Uh, uh, enjoy um, uh, Morgan Freeman and, uh, and uh, people you just like seeing on screen, having fun together, uh, doing magic. Eat. Yeah, I'll get back to that. Mike? <laughs> Here's, here's the thing. Both of these movies are uh, garbage. I've never seen either of them, but they're both garbage. Here's the thing. Why I would buy my Big Factory Wedding too. My family loves those movies. I would gift that, okay? I, we don't have to watch these with these questions. I would gift that. That would be something that would actually make my mother very, very happy. Or my grandmother. She likes that shit, too. This doesn't have to be about the quality. <laughs> Ten seconds, Spencer. Think it out. That was good. You both got good ones out. You know who likes Now You See Me movies? China. That's why they made a second one, because it's a huge worldwide hit. That got Lionsgate to make another one. My Big Fat Greek Wedding missed the ball because they could have made my Big Fat Armenian Wedding, my Big Fat Jewish Wedding, my Big Fat Any Wedding. They dropped it. Mike? Spencer has no affiliation with China as far as I'm concerned, okay? <laughs> I'm talking about one? something personally. We can't talk about the merits of these movies. We have to talk about why you would buy them. And this is a perfect stocking stuffer for the holiday. <laughs> Ooh, that was good. That was a good argument, but I didn't like that he didn't give me something new at the end Sorry. from Mike. So, but that was a really strong gifting argument. But I'm gonna go to the couch. Yeah. Did, was that enough, or the did Spencer give you more? Says Mike hates his mom. That's awful. <laughs> what? No, man, Spencer fully got that point. Huh? Heist movies are great. He said the Radcliffe point was great. Mike, I feel so bad for your mother. <laughs> are we all in agreement? Uh, where I definitely in agreement, Spence. Yeah, I think I think it was. A Decided when Spence said casting Daniel Radcliffe as a bumbling magician. There's a meta quality, no matter. And the movies are those. Now you see, movies are stupid and brainless, but they have better casts. Who wants to watch Neo Vardalos and all those fucking? This is about the uh, argument, uh, Mark. Uh, not uh, about no. 
Nice Argument case. wise, and actually, I feel like Spencer brought up more points. He was more factual. He brought mm. uh, an emotion to it that it felt like he was actually drawn to the film it's instead of hot. just dismissing his family into purgatory, yeah, which is loud. just <laughs> not, not the way to go. Yeah, the that mics is very loud. Uh, yeah, I'll join the rest of the click here and say, yeah, mm. Spence. I also <laughs> have seen. Don't, uh, don't talk so close to the mic, guys. Thank you, guys. I also have seen neither of them. What, Dan? No, no, go ahead. Sorry. I thought, go ahead. What? I'll let you make the final judgment, and then I'll say something. Oh, well, I'm anything. going with Spencer. Okay. Then I would just like to say, as le- not even a neutral party, I'm shocked. I think that was a brilliant reinvention of the bargain bin argument. It was a brilliant and reinvention. I would give it a yeah, It was helped. a brilliant reinvention, but then Spencer gave us more in the in the follow-up. So yeah, if Mike know. had given me one more fact, I would have even. So it if I had said, look, it's good, though. The cast is good. It was a very good uh, <laughs> argument, but it's a terrible movie to give your mom. It is. If I have your judgment on that, I, I, I don't like Dan doesn't want me to win the show. I don't want either one of you. You're both great. Thank you. Yeah, well, the consensus said it, but I agree. That was a very very strong f- point. If you hadn't repeated yourself, you would have gotten it right. in my mind. Sure. Here we go. Number three. What is the worst Tom Hanks movie? The Terminal. Lady Killers. Terminal <laughs> versus Lady Killers. Love it. All right. Spencer, you were first. Time begins and you begin speaking. The terminal is based on a true story, and it's the true story of a man stuck in an airplane terminal. <laughs> that is in the lead for dumbest premise in that question back there. You're watching a man wait in an airport. There's nothing more insufferable than doing that in real life. There must be nothing more insufferable than watching that in real life, no matter how likable he is. And he's not even playing a traditional Tom Hanks character. He's playing like a like he's putting on a voice and an accent, and it's more borderline offensive. Uh, like right. Lady Killers is like the worst Coen Brothers movie ever. Like that's one of the two of the best filmmakers of all time, and that is one of the most confusing movies I've saw. And every single choice in it, from Tom Hanks' accent to the direction to even doing the project to begin with, is just a disaster. The Terminal is fine, but it's like inoffensive. If you watch the Lady Killers, you're like, what the hell happened to all these people? They're great. What happened? Okay. Ten seconds, Spencer. Okay, the Lady Killers, you have great people. And the worst Coen Brothers movie, I'll watch a million times more than I'll sit for an hour and a half for two hours of a guy waiting in an airport terminal. That is painful. That's like movie purgatory. Dragging people that are really great down to the bottom, I think, is a bigger skill than just making something mediocre. And the terminal is mediocre. Lady Killers is just garbage, and it's confusing the whole time, and you can't believe what's happening on the screen. Ooh, all right, couch. Based on those arguments, I'm going with Spence for the terrible. I mean, the terminal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel like Spencer was talking about why the movie was bad and why Tom Hanks is bad in it. And I feel like Mike was just talking about why The Lady Killers is a bad film. But I think if you're Oops. asking what Tom Hanks' worst role is, it's the terminal and Spencer's argument was Mark. Great. If I was forced to watch two of these, both of these <laughs> god awful movies, I would watch the, the, uh, the Lady Killers. Based um, on the arguments, though. Yeah, but based on the arguments, Spence is right. The uh, the ter- sp- I don't want to spend two hours in an airport with me live, <laughs> let alone two hours with a bad accent walking around there. And the uh, Lady Killers is a bad movie, but it's by far not the worst movie the Coen Brothers have ever made. Coy. Mm. That was really tricky because I feel like each round went back Lower and forth. Lower the mic down a little bit for me. Uh, Sorry. I yeah. feel like each round went back and forth, but. I gotta say, overall, I agree with Spencer that Terminal was was the argument Spencer had for the Terminal JT? was stronger. Yeah, I totally agree. Spence pretty much killed it that time, and I'm pissed mm. I didn't pick Terminal for worst premise. <laughs> yeah, uh, JT, you keep premise. on your side. We'll start on your end when we come back. JT can start on this end. So that's two points for Spencer, one point for Movie Mance. I'm starting to move it. Movie Mance? Uh, yeah. Mike Carlson. Can we get Mance back up here? <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to name two people here. Ready? Who would you rather have a drink with? Michael Keaton or Kurt Russell? Kurt Russell. Michael Keaton. Ooh, okay. So uh, Spencer took Keaton. No, wait, you took Kurt Russell. Yeah. Mike took Keaton. All right, Spencer, uh, you went first. Time starts when you get speaking. Who is the better person to take a drink with? Michael Keaton, Kurt Russell. You're arguing Kurt Russell. Kurt Russell is, by all accounts, one of the nicest people in Hollywood. This is a guy who put his entire acting career on hiatus to help his son's hockey career and move to Canada. He just seems like a good guy in all of his roles and all of his interviews. Michael Keaton's a little unstable. I'm not sure if I'm going to have to take that guy home or get in a fight with him. Kurt Russell, you know you're just going to kick back with a brew, enjoy the times, have a couple good stories, and go home happy. Look, 
<clears throat> we don't want to have a drink with either of these guys, but when he said the, that Michael Keaton is more unstable, that's why I want to talk to him, because I don't know what this guy is up to. What has he been up to? He had this long drought of movies. I'm so interested to see. Maybe it's a disaster, a disaster but that's actually new information. Kurt Russell is going to be fine, but we don't know. I have so many questions for one of my favorite actors, Michael Keaton, that are still not been answered in all the time that he's been in show business. Spencer, follow up. He had a long drought of movies, and then he came back with Birdman, where he plays one of the most pretentious, self-centered, uh, self-referential actors of all time. I don't want to have a drink with that guy. I'd have a drink with Batman Michael Keaton, but not present-day Michael Keaton. And Kurt Russell present-day is still amazing. He's, a, he's doing a Fast and Furious movie. He's got to be a good guy. <laughs> Alright, 10 uh, seconds I think that Fast and Furious argument disqualifies him right there. <laughs> but Birdman is a great movie. He's making now interesting choices. I think there's a lot of depth to Michael Keaton that we haven't seen because it's somebody that you don't know personally. This is a chance to get to know Michael Keaton personally and get to know what makes him tick. I love Kurt Russell, it'd be fun, but I've been drinking with a guy like him before. I don't know about Michael Keaton. So I guess spending some extra time yeah, accidentally, okay. so I gave Mike a, okay. a little bit extra Guys, time. I thought uh, Mike did beautifully on that. What did you guys think? Yeah, I gotta agree. The question of where was Michael Keaton, I was saying that to myself for like the, throughout right. the 90s. Where's Michael Keaton? So if I could find out what happened during that dark period of my life, that would <laughs> win me the argument. <laughs> I, I, I'm actually the other way based on the argument that I've drank with some Michael Keatons in my day and that gives me the fear. Uh, whereas I feel like Kurt Russell, you just, you know you're having a good time and there's less cause for, I, I feel like Michael Keaton might get us stabbed. So I feel like that the way to go is Kurt Russell because it's safe and it's warm Mark, and it's fuddly. go through quick, let's see. Uh, Michael Keaton, yeah, because I think, I think what he was doing during the 90s was Batman money. Um, but I definitely okay. think Michael Keaton, I want to ask, I want, there are questions for Michael Keaton, Kurt Mance? Russell, I kind of know. I, I don't know. I, I was going back and forth, but ultimately I, I wanted to go with uh, go with Kurt Russell on this. Oh, all right, we're tied, Sasha. I, I think that I think it was Spencer's argument that you know you're going to have a good time and go home happy, as opposed to you might get stabbed if you're with Michael Keaton. Michael Keaton, Spencer. Just <laughs> Michael Keaton's not a maniac. Yeah. You want to get nuts? Uh, <laughs> uh, I don't think he said that. I gotta. I don't, I, Carlson gets the point. Carlson gets the point. Those two get of an argument. Yeah, yeah. I'm destroying my dreams right now. Do we all know who Michael Keaton is? Uh, uh, too many, too many questions. He made a very good. Uh, the, turning Spencer's argument against him was too good of a move. Mm. Uh, all right, one more, uh, one more uh, one question here. It's question tied, guys. Oh. This is it? Good game either way. Mike got the point, so it's two-two, oh. and that means we have one last question here. I'm making sure. Okay, let's do it. Yeah. Okay. More disappointing, the Matrix sequels or the Hobbit prequels? Matrix sequels. sequels. <laughs> <laughs> that was too close. That was like, really <laughs> same time. I think Spencer might have said it there first. I don't think we can replay it right now. Maybe I think I think Spencer might have come in like a half second early. I'm not sure. Just for my can we argue my each why it's more disappointing <laughs> than the other? <laughs> Can we team up? I'm against? gonna give you a different one. Okay, oh, all right. I'm gonna give you a different one. Let's be fair here. That was a very uneven this, question. This I broad. think personally. This is broad. Okay? okay. It's gonna make you think, though. Oh shit. What's the best movie with a title that's six words or longer? Oh god. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Ten seconds. Doctor Strangelove or How I Learned to what? Stop Worrying and Love the Bomb. Okay, you got it in. Six or more? Six or more. Jeez. Oh, I hope you guys checked and there's a lot, right? Yeah. Oh, I'm gonna get myself disqualified. Uh, uh, Precious based on the novel Pushed by Sam. <laughs> <laughs> Doctor Strange Love versus Precious. Spencer, twenty seconds. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Doctor Strange Love is what? <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. Let me restart. Let me restart. Let me restart. Gather yourself. Stenuating circumstances. I won't allow Doctor Strange Love is a perfect film. It's a movie with a message, but not in an obnoxious way, in a comedic way. It's biting satire. It has some of the best performances of all time. Uh, it's a movie that was perfectly timely, but holds up today. It had something to say about nuclear war. It had something to say about militarism. And it was beautifully shot by Stanley Kubrick. Bold choices to shoot it in black and white, uh, uh, to make it in the time that he made it. It, it. What's the actual wording of this question? One more time. 
best movie with a title that's okay. six words or longer. Got it. All right. Precious, based on the novel Push by Sapphire, is a dark story. This is something that actually gets into the grit and, and, and shows what people in this country are going through. This is a comedic farce. This is a movie that actually gets down and dirty with what people are doing. This is something that actually shows you what people in the in the poorest places and the most horrible places are going through. This is just a fun... Ro I think that's crazy. Oh, hold on. Uh, let's give him 20 seconds. 20 seconds. 20 seconds. All right, 20 seconds. Just all marbles. Yep. Uh, I think that's crazy to say Dr. Strangelove doesn't show us what people in this country are going through. I think that shows that it's timeless because a story about nuclear war and the dangers of it and uh, of militarizing is more relevant now than it ever is. There's lots of novels about poverty. There's lots of novels about the black experience and struggle. Uh, I think that people mostly remember the title from Precious and they remember her banging the pots. But there are scene after scene that there's no fighting in the war room from Dr. Strangelove. Uh, the bomb... Dr. Oh, sorry. All right. Do so, hold it. Gather yourself. Sorry. 20 seconds. Okay. Uh, I believe Dr. Strangelove is not a good movie because it's damaging. When we take something and we make it so absurd, we actually normalize it, much like we did with Donald Trump on Saturday Night Live. <laughs> we so took something that was actually dangerous and we made it fun and happy. We didn't see the danger. Precious is a movie that really shows you. It doesn't take anything. It doesn't make it crazy. It doesn't blow it out of proportion. It shows you what people are going through, and that's why... <laughs> Woo! Two great <laughs> fighters, two great debates. Guys, I hope you were listening. Sa who's got the mic? Sasha, or uh, who's got it? Sasha, we'll start with you. Based on the arguments. I feel like they both make really great points, but I think Spencer just made more points, perhaps? But I don't know. So uh, Spencer for Sasha. I, I thought Spencer made better points, <laughs> and he sold me on the film. Mark? Precious has the bet funnier title, <laughs> but when Mike said that 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 uh, Strange Love was just a farce, it, it it so diminishes what that movie is. That movie is a brilliant satire, one of the best ever made. Mm -hmm. So by Mike's own words, I have to go with Spencer. Coy, I feel like Spencer was on the offensive and handled himself really well, and Mike being on the defensive was pretty telling. So I give it to Spencer. JT. Yeah, Mike had an uphill battle, and he had a great opening, but I think in the second part. Uh, I think Spence really just kind of hammered it home. It's mm. too good of a movie. Well, I can still overrule, but I won't. Woo. Spencer, mm. wow. you get Look the out. show so Oh my god! <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Mm. Bravo. Bravo. I'm going into serious speed round training. I'm going to research IMDB. I'm going to learn every actor that starts with every letter. Uh, I'm coming for you, Dan Murrow. How about a round of applause, though, for Mike Carlson. Bravo! Thank you. One of our best fighters for the today. Kudos, sir. Mike Carlson, anything you'd like to plug here today? Uh, Twitter, Fat Carlson. Uh, Any Star Wars trading cards or anything? I haven't been doing it, but I am on WWE tra uh, oh, Card okay. Trader, so yeah, look for me on there. I forget what my name is, so try all the names you think. Spencer J. Gilbert. Right here on, on Twitter, Twitter. soon to be surprising Dan Gilbert. Merle with the with the Ooh. chair to the back of the head of the showstopper. Can't wait. <laughs> Let's go through the couch. <laughs> Sasha Pearl Raver, anything you'd like to plug? Thank I you. Can't. Watch Screen Junkies News. Ooh, Hell yeah. good call on uh, Sasha Very Pearl good. Raver. Uh, uh, yes, and then we have Movie Mance. Catch me on Axis Hollywood. Follow me on Twitter at Movie Mance. You can also follow me on Instagram at The Movie Mance. Because some asshole on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> Any last penis reference? I'm no. not an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> um, the biggest thing I have coming out December 21st, uh, a book I curated called Love is Love. It's a 144-page charity book for the victims of the Orlando Pulse Massacre, featuring some of the biggest names in comics, literature, film, TV, and music. Uh, every penny goes to charity. Pre-order it now at idwpublishing.com or at your local comic book store. Uh, it's for a good cause, and I, the book went to press today. I saw it. It's fantastic. And there's some, there's some big announcements being made for the book of contributors that you will hear about in the next couple of weeks. You'll want to pre-order it because it's going to sell out. I just want to plug uh, my Twitter at Coy Jondro, my Instagram at Coy Jondro, and his book because it's worth every word that was just said and everyone needs to pick it up because it's, it's going to be amazing. I, I know things that are get it. Uh, JT Movie Thanks YouTube channel. I review films, trailers. I try to see stuff as early as possible so you guys get an early word of if it's going to be good or bad. Uh, and with the fall season right now, i got so many movies to review. But it's a great time, so hit me up on YouTube. And I want to fight this guy in a real match. Yeah, we're, it's going mm. down. Oh, yeah, right. I'm, I'm oh. calling Coy out. Okay. <laughs> Dan Murrow on the couch. How are you feeling with this uh, verdict? Uh, you know, I, I would make some snide remark about Spencer's pass with the speed rounds <laughs> and this all playing out the way that I wish it would, but I've learned that you never take victory for granted and you never underestimate your opponent. And so Good I lesson. will be ready for this man your whenever colleague he here decides. Your can surprise you any day. He's in the office. Any in day, the office. I will be ready whenever he decides to drop that challenge. <laughs> Woo! 
Uh, and thank you for coming here, Tybee uh, Diskin. Thank you for what? Did you have fun? I did, very much. Good. My mic's not near my face. <laughs> I had a great time. Love it. Awesome. Uh, thank you guys for watching. I hope you had a wonderful holiday. We just happy had so much fun. Happy Thanksgiving mm -hmm. if you celebrate it. Otherwise, happy uh, weekend and the rest of the world. And thank you for watching and being such a loyal fan. And a year plus, all this amazing stuff. We have so much fun and coming stuff in store. And make sure you check out uh, sj.plus slash fam to join Fan Appreciation Month so you can vote for our honest trailers and submit yourself for fan fights. That's it, everybody. Have a good one. Bye-bye. Every podcast we put on YouTube comes with this kick-ass graphic listing all the topics your favorite Screen Junkies podcasters are talking about. If you click the topics, you can skip around and choose your own podcast battle royale. Go ahead, try them all. If you haven't already, subscribe to Screen Junkies on YouTube to join us for future fights. Or if you prefer to listen on iTunes, click the logo to download an audio version.